football. The top collegiate running back, Lorenzo White, will lead the Michigan State Spartans against the University of Southern California Trojans, led by their versatile quarterback, Rodney Pete. It's a game featuring outstanding defensive players on both sides, including USC's All-America linebacker, Marcus Cotton. A matchup of the Big Ten and Pac-10 to start the 1987 college football season on ABC. Even though classes have not started at Michigan State University, all 76,000 seats at Spartan Stadium have been sold for tonight's game, the opener of the season between USC and Michigan State. In the Michigan capital city area, it's been labeled the Great American Football Celebration with a salute to labor on this holiday weekend. And fittingly so, the weather is a bit threatening, as you can see on the horizon. It's a bit gloomy looking, but we may make it through the night without any appreciable rain. Here come the visitors, the Southern California Trojan in the Spartan Stadium with a new coaching staff at the helm. Headman is Larry Smith. Moved over from the University of Arizona, his third head coaching job, his first having been at Tulane. And as you would expect at USC, preseason optimism is high. It's always high. And now the home folks are walking their way down the tunnel, and the roar will start to build as the Michigan State Spartans are about to come bolting out of the tunnel. Remember, there are no students here. This is alumni in the main and people from all around this region who have gobbled up the tickets to come see this intersectional match tonight. These teams have not played all that many times over the years, but George Perlis thinks this team this year could be the best team he has had, and this is George's fifth season at Michigan State. In effect, he left pro football to come home. And here he comes now with his team for 1987. football celebration here in Lansing and East Lansing there has been this afternoon and evening what was called the great state tailgate originality a prime part of the judging for the best prize and the top prize was eight round-trip air tickets to London surely that helped inspire an unprecedented amount of fried chicken and ribs some folks came in high cotton Long cars and bubbly and fresh flowers and a load of enthusiasm. All right. Well, all of that and what promises to be a very good intersectional football game brought all these folks here, and we think they're going to have a good time tonight. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and welcome to 1987 College Football on ABC. This game tonight, matching USC and Michigan State, is a game of posture the national polls and just simply the fact that whoever wins this game tonight will almost surely come away with an improved ranking it is a pleasure to introduce as my partner and analyst for this 87 season a college football hall of famer from purdue 14 seasons quarterback of the miami dolphins mr bob greasy it's a pleasure bob to have you with us chicken and ribs and bubbly huh <laughs> <laughs> yeah you've been up here a few times you still got that helmet they did it the last time you came uh, i get bad memories every time i come <laughs> up here i was here when george webster and bubble were here we never beat them here oh <laughs> uh, there was that was a tough crowd <laughs> Larry Smith now Larry has moved over from Arizona into what is generally considered one of the hot seats in college football in Southern California. He's got to come in here and play a very good Michigan State team to start the season without one of the traditional USC weapons and that's a dominant tailback. That's true Keith the offense that we'll see tonight is not your typical Trojan offense. 
Gone are all the Heisman Trophy winner running backs, and the Trojans have had four of them in the past. You'll see a quarterback-dominated offense for the Trojans tonight, led by Rodney Pete, and what an outstanding player he is. He's excitement, but his, uh, his success this year may hinge on how well they develop that tailback position because they're going to they're get after Rodney. All right, now, on the other side, George Perlis of Michigan State's got one great one and one he thinks is going to be great, and Lorenzo White and uh, Blake Ezor. Well, the, the problem with uh, the offense for Michigan State is a little different. They have their Heisman Trophy candidate in Lorenzo White. They have eight starters returning on offense. The problem is their quarterback, Dave Urema, who started for the last three years, is gone. I think what they need to do is uh, develop Bobby McAllister, who is going to be playing quarterback, and take some pressure off of uh, Lorenzo White because you can be sure that they're going to stack the defenses to stop him. Both these coaches, however, build their football teams on defense, and I think there's going to be some thunderous defense played in the trenches tonight. The other member of our announcing team, our colleague on the field, is a young man who came here with the Northwestern Wildcats one time and walked away with a victory. Mike Adam Lee. Keith, you mentioned that this game is a game of posturing. It's also a game of tradition. In the most uh, agonizing hours a football player must spend and endure the ones just before kickoff, lonely hours of introspection spent focusing in on the task at hand and here in East Lansing there's been a long state standing Michigan State tradition that uh, the Spartan football team walked to the game together from the Kellogg Center to Spartan Stadium in virtual silence a nine minute trek symbolic of team unity and school pride clad in coat and tie these young men seem to be making the statement whatever we accomplish tonight win or lose we will accomplish it together as a team it is a philosophy that has stood the test of time. The Spartan walk was done in the days of the legendary Duffy Doherty, and it is done today, tonight. Michigan State coach George Perlis believes in that rich tradition, and so do his football players. Keith? So everybody settles down in their seats as the Trojans and the Spartans square off and get ready to start 87. First, Craig Johnson, number 28, number 26, Blake Ezor, deep to receive the kickoff of Eric Atholter. Eric is a junior out of Agora, California. The Southern California Trojans won the toss, but deferred, electing to take the second half kickoff. Atholter, kind of an interesting story. He is the number two split in behind Ken Henry, but he will do all the kicking for the Trojans outside the 30-yard line. Glenn Rodriguez will do the kicking inside the 30. Matchup number six between USC and Michigan State is on. It is Craig Johnson, a junior from Massillon, Ohio, giving Michigan State good field position as he plummets out to the 35-yard line. Appholzer, the kicker, brought him down. Up front, Manderich uh, is lining up for Michigan State. He's the biggest man up front, 290. Across the front, you see the lineup. Shermer is a grad student, the first ever to play for Michigan State. The backfield, quarterback is Bobby McAllister. Key man, of course, is Lorenzo White. Joe Pugh is opening at fullback instead of James Moore. Moore is coming off a broken bone in his finger. And Bobby McAllister comes out on the first play of the ball game from his 35. A little dump off that to the sidelines to Andre Rison, and it's good for about five yards. Three down linemen for USC. Ryan Gibson Owens, all young. Saw two sophomores and Gibson, the freshman, big fellas. Don't know how good they are yet. Stokes and Cotton outside. Inside, it's Moore and Davis. Defensive secondary is a worry for Larry Smith and his staff. Cowett, the most experienced man back there, though they are very high on carrier. McAllister gives the ball to Lorenzo White. A little misdirection, and Lorenzo boats over the right side for a first down up around the 48-yard line before Bill Stokes brings him down. It's a sprint draw where he'll step one way to his left. One of the things that White does so very well is cut back. He has great vision, as most good running backs do, and good uh, footwork to get through the hose. Got a pretty good foundation underneath him, too. What was it, 12 and a half? Up? Size 12 and a half uh, <laughs> shoes. Uh, good foundation. All right, the San Andre rising wide. Take Willie Boyer out. 
Go to a double tight end alignment and give it to Lorenzo White going to the field side. The shoot is on. Number eight got there first for USC. That's Cleveland Coulter. Number nine, Dwayne Garner was coming with him. Garner is the cornerback, in effect, that plays the field side, and that was pretty good pursuit for the Trojans. Excellent pursuit, and as you mentioned, this defense is structured for, uh, they, they defense the field, Keith. In other words, they don't defense the formation. Uh, they're all American linebacker. Marcus Cotton, 58, will always go to the wide side, as will number nine, Garner. He is their best cover uh, corner. So they go. he goes to the wide side, and a Cotton right there will also go to the wide side, figuring that most offenses are going to run that way. Something of a loss, maybe a half yard on the play. Second down, call it 10 and a half. McAllister back, throws underneath the coverage, and right there to make the tackle is Greg Cowett. Cowett is 6'3", 210. He picked up the fullback coming out of the backfield, and Cowett, who used to be a linebacker, will always play the boundary side. He plays the short side corner, and I predict somewhere along tonight that uh, George Perlis and his offense are going to try to get one of those speedy receivers on him one-on-one -on -one and get deep. He's a tough player, but he's almost a linebacker playing corner. There's George, who came home. He left the Pittsburgh Steelers to momentarily be with the USFL and then came to his alma mater. Three wide outs now. Man in motion. Ball is given on that misdirection again to Lorenzo White. Breaks it big. He may be gone. He had one man to beat. Greg Cowett brought him down. It's first down. Michigan State at the Trojan 16. Watch the linebackers now as 35 more. You see him miss right there. Gibson misses 92. A huge hole as the linebackers overrun. And this is just pure talent and speed getting past the linebackers as Cowett, 46, makes the uh, saving touchdown. Pick up of 31 yards on the play. And Michigan State now is cooking at the Trojan 16 with a double tight end alignment. They got a rising way wide out of your picture. McAllister to White. Cuts it back off tackle. Gets to the 15. That'll do it. One yard. Don Gibson, the freshman redshirt freshman nose guard, made the stop. Take a look at Cotton, number 58 at the top left of your screen. As you see, 74, Hula blocking on him. Did a nice job that time. Of course, he had containment. Might have had a handful of shirt, too. 15-yard <laughs> line, second down and nine, Michigan State. McAllister rolls it right, looks to throw, throws underneath, pass caught Andre Rise, and inside the 10 in front of Dwayne Garner. They mark him just inside the 10, so the gain is uh, pretty short on that particular play and a dangerous pass to throw. Callister just getting some safe, easy passes under his uh, under his wing a little bit before he goes downfield. Ryzen has all kinds of speed. Garner was a half step off that one. No question about it, Keith. Third down. They have to go to the six for their first down. Ball at the 10, need four. White's got it, gets a big hole. Seal blocking, beautiful blocking by Michigan State. Touchdown, Spartans. The key block was thrown by Andre Risen on Dwayne Garner, and the rest of it was left to Lorenzo, and he did it with style. The extra point try, John Langlo, redshirt freshman from Sterling Heights, Michigan, out of the hold of the putter, Greg Montgomery, who averaged almost 48 yards per kick last year. Langlo's kick is good. So Lorenzo scores the touchdown, had a big play in the drive of 31 yards. No surprises on this drive. Give the ball to Lorenzo as you see the guard. Tata, 61, pulls. He goes outside as you see the, uh, watch this move right here. There's a good block there. And then the move back inside of 19, Carrier gets him into the end zone. 
And so at 11 11 to go in the first quarter Michigan State opens its first possession and cashes in a touchdown. Well there's concern on the Southern California side because what has just happened was the big thing they were worried about keeping the big play away from uh, keeping Lorenzo White out of the big play. White came into this ball game with 3315 career yards and he was the prime factor in that drive for the touchdown. Drive of 65 yards. That was a good run, too, by the return man to get him out and get him in good field position, which probably gave them all a whole different perspective on how to start the offense. He, Chris Allen, the defensive coordinator for the Trojans, said one thing he wanted to do was try and contain White. He knew he wasn't going to stop him, but... Uh... Langlow kicks it into the end zone. No return. Cleveland Coulter caught it back there. So that freshman uh, really belted it. Deep into the end zone, and the Trojans will take it first down at the 20. We line up with Cadigan Levick, Katnick, Parkinson, Sager. The big guys along the front. Randy Tanner, swift flanker, split in is Henry. Tailback will be Ryan Knight. Fullback will be Holt. Tight end Paul Green. And the quarterback, the man around whom the offense is built, Rodney Pete. Trojans go double wide, top of the screen. First snap of the ball game. Bring a man Tanner back in motion in front of the eye and give it to the tailback Knight. Nothing. Middle linebacker Percy Snow, a sophomore from Canton, Ohio, hit him right on the numbers. Here's the defense, three down for Michigan State. Snow in the middle, Moore and Larson on each side of him. Bergen, Nichols, Davis, and Buddy. That's uh, the younger Buddy. Uh, Brad, his older brother, was an All-American at Southern California. Daddy Ed is here, I imagine, with most of the family. John Jackson is in the ball game now as a wide receiver, one of the real speedsters, and Rodney Pete rolls it out. Whips it down the middle. Pass is intended for Henry. Goes sailing right through his hands and is incomplete. Lanier Payton got a piece of it, but the ball was thrown very hard and a little bit behind Ken Henry. Keith, the Trojan offense matches up pretty well against the Michigan State defense. The state defense was number one in the Big Ten last year against the run. The Trojan offense is not built around the run this year. It's about built around the pass with uh, Rodney Pete. So they stack up pretty well offensively. The state worries a lot about the scrambling ability of Pete because he can turn a broken play into a big game. He still got it. And he whips the pass underneath. Pass is caught by number 17, Paul Green, the tight end. But he is well short of a first down. And that'll bring in the kicking team for the Trojans and the Michigan State defensive unit sky high as they come off the field. The punter for the Trojans, Chris Spurl, averaged just over 39 last year on 49 punts. But he's improved his hang time considerably, and that is a point that Larry Smith and his staff stretches. Todd Crum, defensive back, safety man, is back to receive the kick for Michigan State. They should come out of this with pretty good field position if he handles the ball. He comes all the way up to the 38 to accept it, fumbles it. Ball bouncing around, and Michigan State will cover it. Oh, it is still loose. And USC's got the ball. If he handles it, they had one man back, only one man back, and you see the considered risk right there that goes with having one man deep. Tracy Butts is the man who covers it. Ball is right there, just slips through his hands, and then the ball is knocked loose. George Perlis, the head coach of the Spartans, was concerned about the special teams, but he was he's concerned about blocking and protecting for his punter. He didn't expect he'd have a problem receiving the punt. So a big break for the Trojans. Michigan State, 21-yard line. They picked up 17 additional yards out of the muff. The punt traveled only 34. And the handoff to Knight, the tailback, and he knifes through to the 15. Picks up about six yards, at least five. They'll mark him at the 16, so give him five. Well, that'll let the air out of your balloon real quick to make that kind of a mistake. But again, I remind you that Michigan State uses only a single deep in punt receiving. You know the other thing, Keith, this is the first night game ever played at uh, 
Michigan State, there may have been some problem uh, getting used to that ball coming down in these lights. Second down and five for the Trojans. State, 16-yard line. Again, the tailback. Knight cuts over the right side, and he is close to a first down. As his momentum will carry a very strong running back. Not the swiftest of the swift. But he's going to have a first down for USC just outside the Michigan State 10. Mark Nichols made the tackle for the Spartans. Larry Smith right there, as you see, with the headset on and without the hat, said he was a little bit surprised when he moved from Arizona to Southern Cal at the lack of speed. He thought when he played him that they had a little bit more speed than when he got there. He said that wasn't the case. They've gone to a double tight in alignment now. It is first and 10. The ball is outside the 10. Give it to the tailback Knight. And he's running right in behind Brad Leggett, 265. Dave Cadogan, 280. And the tight end on that side, Paul Green, 230. There's big Dave Cadogan right there. 6'5", 280, dedicating this game and this season to his mom. He lost her not long ago, his best pal. Mark it on the seven. Pick up just over three yards, second down. You got John Jackson now coming wide. And time called by the officials. They're looking at the clock. The referee is out of the Pac-10, Gordon Reese. Greg Strocher, the umpire, Big Ten. Charles Stewart, the headlinesman, Pac-10. I'll give you the rest in a moment. Pete rolls it left. Throws it in the corner. Incomplete. No chance for John Jackson. He was on his tummy. And Lanier Payton had a shot at intercepting it, but couldn't scoop it. One of the concerns coming in was that Payton, number 24, is a redshirt freshman. Whether or not he would be able to hold up over there. He's 6'3". They were concerned a little bit about his footwork. This time, he has his man covered as Jackson slipped down before he made his break, almost coming up with the interception. Third down from the seventh. Randy Tanner, the wide man. Pete comes left again, cuts it back in the middle, and he is cut down by Percy Snow, the middle linebacker. Percy Snow. It is fourth down, and the kicking team is on the field. It'll be Quinn Rodriguez bringing the tee in for Southern California. Snow is the middle linebacker, Keith, and this is a stunning style of defense. Four defensive linemen. Perla said yesterday that the middle linebacker should be the leading tackler in this defense. The holder is quarterback Kevin McClay. Rodriguez kick from 23 yards is good. So Southern California recovers the fumble, pick up a first down, have it first down just outside the 10, have to settle for the field goal, 7 4 to go first quarter, 7-3 you can see that Rodney Pete had a big season last year at quarterback for Southern California. And he's got to have another one if the Trojans are going to have much success this year because the schedule is rough. The first Southern Cal Trojan ever named Offensive Player of the Year, I think that tells you a little bit about it. And, and also, uh, you think back to all of the... Uh, teams and all the successes the Southern Cal uh, Trojans have had but you can't remember many quarterbacks it's always been that uh, tailback that gets all the credit and the offensive lineman a lot of good offensive linemen come out of there Ab Holter will be kicking off for USC with Craig Johnson and Blake Ezor the deep people good high hanging kick taken by Ezor very quick tailback great speed oh boy Michigan State again gets very, very good field position off the kick return. Up near the 45 before Jeff Marie finally brought him down. One of the big stories coming into this game and talking with both coaches yesterday, the concern about the special teams. Larry Smith says they spend one third of our practice time on it, not necessarily the last third. Perlis was so concerned about it, he says, some of the things they do on their special teams, we have copied. And you know that imitation is the highest form of flattery and two well-coached special teams here tonight. Bobby McAllister sets them out of the eye formation, fakes to White, keeps it, whips it to the sidelines, Andre Risen. 
And it is good. You only need one foot, remember, in college football, and he pulled it in in time, and it's down near the Southern California 42. Ryzen working to the wide side on Garner, just runs a simple out pattern. Garner giving him some room, respecting that tremendous speed. Ryzen was the uh, receiver opposite Mark Ingram, who was the number one draft choice this past year of the New York Giants. Ryzen was uh, the first team uh, all Big Ten receiver. Ingram was second. They think pretty highly of this man right here. McAllister, four for four, 31 yards. First down, Michigan State. Trojan, 42. Rolls it right. Pursuit is on. Big nose guard after him. Dumps it off underneath to the fullback. He heard the hoofbeats of Big Dan Owens and dumped it off incomplete. You notice that Michigan State will set it up once in a while in the unbalanced line. Not always, but much of the time, go unbalanced. It's the belief of the coaching staff that you can, if not confuse, maybe even negate the blitz by using the unbalanced front. McAllister again rolls to the open side. Throws underneath the pass to the fullback. And pulling it in is Joe Pugh, a sophomore from Grand Rapids. And he's lassoed down around the 32. Looks like he might be just a bit short of his first down. And here's our first penalty flag of the ball game. Holding Michigan State. Otto Poles is the line judge, and today's his birthday. Colin McDermott is the field judge. Danny Freund is the side judge, and Harold Mitchell is the back judge. Next Saturday afternoon, going into our regular Saturday afternoon time slot, 3 o'clock Eastern time, we'll have another great one for you. Notre Dame, Lou Holt, second year, coming into Ann Arbor against Bo Schimbeckler's Michigan Wolverines. And Bo has not yet named his quarterback. But the, the pollsters around the country think highly enough of, Michigan, of the Wolverines that they've got him in the top ten again. Well, he'll have a good quarterback. There's no question about that. Ball comes back to the Michigan State 49, where it is second down. This is Lorenzo White. And grabbing him is Dan Owen. Owen, the sophomore out of Lake Havasu, Arizona, 6'4", 255. Those two youngsters up front on the USC defense, Gibson is 6'3", 250, a redshirt freshman, and Tim Ryan is 6'5", 250, a sophomore out of San Jose. They eat heartily, and they're still growing. <laughs> Ryan, 99, was voted by the Football News as the best freshman offensive defensive lineman in the country. The, the style that SC uses is very aggressive, and that could work against them with a slashing style of runner as uh, Lorenzo White. On third down and 19, McAllister straight back. He's got some open field, pulls it down. Got a great block. Still going, dives. He's got a first down at the 30-yard line of USC. He got a heck of a block from the fullback Joe Pugh on Cleveland Coulter. Coulter will have him in his sights, and Pugh's going to knock him out. No question. One of the things they worked on, that if the receiver was covered to run, watch Pugh, 38, if you can see right there, Pugh is in the lineup because of a broken hand cast on the right hand of James Moore, the regular fullback. Pugh has caught a few passes already and throw a, threw a key block right there. So McAllister comes up with a big play, and it's first down Michigan State, the Trojan 30. White, look how quickly he stopped, changed direction, but this time the Trojans get him. Garner and Coulter combining. The strength of this SC defense, Keith, is their linebacker in core. They have four seniors in the linebackers. They have a young defensive front, as you mentioned, and a young secondary. Three of the four starters are new, but their linebackers have been called maybe one of the best sets of linebackers in the country. Yet I've only called the name of one linebacker so far in the ball game, and that was Stokes. And he made a play six yards beyond the line of scrimmage. Second down at about 13 as McAllister sets the throw, gets some heat, dumps it off. White's got it. And White is hit first by Garner, twists ahead his body length and picks up additional yardage to about the 28-yard line. You know, 
know, the couple of times that I saw Bobby McAllister in a ball game, he was a little wild, but tonight, George had said they'd worked very hard at teaching him cool, and he looks pretty good so far tonight. He kept his cool, certainly, on that scramble play. Five out of six for 38 yards. It's third down and about seven now for Michigan State. He looks for Rison, goes underneath to White, and White is brought down around the 26-yard line, and that is short of the first down. It brings up a fourth. Greg Cowett, playing the boundary side of the field, was the first man to get to White. Cowett, number 46. John Langlow, who kicked the ball off a few minutes ago and kicked it deep into the end zone, sets up now for a 43-yard field goal try. A 7-3 ball game. Michigan State here trying to make it 10-3. Going to be wide wide, isn't it? Yes, it is. We get a penalty flag on the field. Hang on. They'll be running into the holder, I believe, Keith. Cleveland Colter. was the Trojan who made the contact. Again, this is a mixed crew, half Pac-10, half Big Ten. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. Automatic first down. Roughing the kicker. First down. Michigan State. Squat. A little bit of high snap. Colder is at the bottom of your screen. Now, let's we'll see. Well, he yeah, dove he and did rough the uh, kicker. I thought it was the holder because the holder stood up. But you six. take him down like that, you're going to get a flag every time. I think. But he was trying to make a positive play. Those things are going to happen. Uh, I don't think that Larry Smith is going to be too upset with him because he was doing something in a positive manner. Smith at, at Arizona, Keith, had a reputation of having some of the best special teams in the country. They blocked 28 kicks while he was there, an average of like four, four punts a season. So um, they say they have good special teams. Well, as Gordy Reese said, automatic first down goes with that penalty. The ball is down on the Trojan 13-yard line. Michigan State now bidding for a big lead early on in the ball game as we get it with Lorenzo White. White cannot turn the corner. The initial contact was made by number 31, Bill Stokes. An interesting story. Bill wanted to be a baseball player. Was going to sign, he thought, with Toronto. His arm went bad. He went to Pasadena City College, couldn't get his arm back, started playing football again. Trojans went and got him. He came <laughs> over, and now he's starting in his senior year at outside backer. One of his friends says, Hey, uh, the team, the football team needs a linebacker. You're big enough. Come on out. The unfortunate thing this year, he may not get a lot of publicity because he's playing the opposite linebacker from Marcus Cotton. It is second down and 10. From the 13, they give it to White. White finds some daylight, bolts to the eight. Maybe the seven. Looks like they'll mark him close to the seven. This time, the inside linebackers of USC, Rex Moore, 35, and Keith Davis, 60, made the tackle. Moore and Davis, the two inside linebackers, led this Trojan defense in tackles last year. They are the... Uh, the, uh, the the real uh, rock, I guess, that, that to build that defense around. Marcus Cotton makes the big plays, but they they defense them from the inside out. And you start with those two big linebackers inside. As you look at Cotton right there, Marcus has been controlled so far in the ball game. And a timeout is called at two minutes and 38 seconds to play in the first quarter. Seven to three, Spartans, and they're trying for more. Overhead tonight for us. We'll tell you more about it in a moment. Michigan State shuffling their cards, not wanting an opportunity to waste away. Called a timeout. And they come back now with uh, three tight ends on the field. It is third down, about four and a half. A little more than four. They send White in motion. McAllister. Penalty flag. McAllister is knocked out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. Penalty flag looked like it came from the side judge. Maybe the umpire. They're both in that tight direction over there. Here's the 
Here's the man that jumped off sides right here. The tight end has jumped already. And you hate to do that when you're in, down in scoring position. Well, they had three of them on the field, Bob. <laughs> they did. <laughs> and that's not unusual. But the one, the one on the right side uh, jumped off sides. USC declines the penalty. They did not want to give Michigan State another play. And by doing so, they take away the touchdown threat and would bring in the field goal unit. Langlow will set the tee down on the 17-yard line for a 27-yard try. Pat Shermer, the regular center, does not do the snapping. That's David Martin. The kick is up, and the kick is good, and Michigan State will settle for three. So the offside penalty proved to be particularly damaging to them, but they still come away with some points and lead by seven with 2.30 to go in the first quarter. The big fellows in the trenches are getting around to business now. They're already tearing up the equipment. I mean, there's some real helmet painting going on down along the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Pat Morris was the offensive uh, line coach you saw right there that was talking to his offensive lineman. Interesting story. He came over this year from Southern Cal. He was there last year, but when Larry Smith brought all of his coaches from Arizona, George Perlis hired him as, a head, as the, uh, the head offensive line coach and was really a big help in preparing for this game. Langlow kicks it. It's a sailing kick. Goes down to the two-yard line where it is taken by number eight, Cleveland Coulter. And Coulter gets some running room and brings it back up to about the 35-yard line. So the Trojans get a little decent field position to start here. Coming up next Monday, the premiere of ABC's That's NFL Monday Night Football. New York Giants and Chicago Bears. Those, of course, the last two teams uh, from the National Conference to play in the Super Bowl. 8.30. Eastern time, 8.30, next Monday night. From the 35, the Trojans will go to work now. You've got three wideouts on the field for USC. Rodney Pete, the quarterback, they break the eye. Pete, the quick pop to the sidelines, passes caught for Ken Henry. Henry, a great leaper at 6'3", 200, a redshirt C, fifth-year senior, I guess you'd call him, from Los Angeles. Keith, you're probably going to see a lot of passing by Pete. Look at the two nose tackles right here. One's going to come this way. One's going to go around. This is why it's so difficult to run anything inside there. It messes up your blocking assignments. The front four don't make many tackles, but they cause confusion, and the linebackers, especially Snow, the middle linebacker, scrapes off and makes all the tackles. Half holder in there now as a wide out. Double wide left. Little pop comes to Tanner. Tanner is brought down after he makes the catch. Up near the 47-yard line, John Miller, a junior from Farmington Hills, Michigan, lassoed him, but he picks up a first down for USC, and they're going to mark him close to, in fact, on the 48-yard line. Well, the one principle of that uh, stunt 4-3 is uh, the penetration, obviously, but there's always a trailer. Somebody behind that first man. Everybody's, uh, you can't, the offensive lineman can't get past the uh, stunning defensive line to get to the linebacker. On first down, Pete gives it to Knight. Ryan Knight finds a hole in the middle. Got a big block on the right side of center that time. Katnick and Leggett opening the door, and I'm sure Cadigan was involved too. And Todd Crum has to make the tackle, but it's another USC first down. Cadigan on the right side and Leggett. Number 63 doing a nice job, a nice big hole. The linebacker just missed the tackle in the hole. But you see a nice gain before that play. USC had only run 16 yards on the ground. It is first down at the Michigan State 38 for the Trojans. John Jackson is on the field. Yep, he said he used to coach at USC. And was a good one, good guy. Here's Randy Tanner. Tanner trying to shake loose, can't do it. Hanging on John Miller again, number 44. And there's a pickup on the play of about eight yards. What was it that uh, George uh, Perlis said to us yesterday about his stunning defense? He says, we're a pain in the tail <laughs> to try and run against. This is the same defense when, uh, when Perlis was the defensive line coach at the Steelers. Uh, Joe Green was the tackle pointed in. He was very tough to run against then and still is. Second down, two and a half. Play goes into the middle. Mark Nichols grabs Ryan Knight. Bangs into the ground at the 30. And they need now on third down, two yards. 
But when you stack your front seven to stop the run as much as the Spartan defense does, it opens up some things on the outside, and the things that Pete has been hitting so far has been the short outside routes. Michigan State's defensive secondary is zone, relatively conservative back there. And both corners are first-time starters. Third down, Trojans 0 for 2, and third down conversions, obviously Pete checked off. Gives it to his tailback, a matter of muscle against muscle as Knight goes into the middle, and it looks like the mark from the line judge is going to be good enough for a first down. Quarter's about gone. It is gone. So we played 15 here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. Michigan State 10, Southern California 3. America out of Houston, Texas, up in Michigan this week. Pilot is Captain Larry Chambers. Larry, of course, spraying Texas. We've got a what they call a gyro cam 360 up in the flip. I tell you. It's a great piece of equipment because it really gives you the most stable picture that has ever been able to achieve from that kind of a platform. Not only stable, but you can get right down there on top of the players. And uh, you know, a lot of the coaches around the country would like to be able to look straight down on top to get the alignments of these players, especially offensive and defensive line coaches. The Trojans got their first down at the 27 of Michigan State. Ryan Knight is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Never had a chance as number 87, John Buddy, comes flying in for the tackle. So look at the first quarter stats. Pretty much even, except for the total yardage. Michigan State dominating there. And the one turnover was by Michigan State on the fumbled punt by Crum. That time, uh, Southern Cal spreading out, going to three wide receivers, trying to force the Spartans to loosen up a little bit that time buddy was not fooled second down and 14 for Southern California Pete back to throw it comes it to the sidelines diving catch at the chalk good and it's inside the 20 and close to a first down I can't tell from this angle if he's got it Eric F Holter Pete with a little play action helps to hold the linebackers Take a look. That's a catch. That's a nice catch. It's marked at the 19. They've got to go inside the 18 for their first down. It is third then and about two. Pete tonight goes right up the pipe behind Parkinson, Katnick, and Leggett. Leggett. And it appears that he has his first down. He's got it. So the Trojans grinding it out now as we start the second quarter of play with Michigan State leading 10 to 3. First down from the 17. Got a man on the sidelines inside the 10. Pass is good to Randy Tanner, a senior out of Valinda, California. And Tanner will have what appears to be another first down. Take a look at the top up here. The receiver is right here. He's going to run down and break to the outside. Watch all the room he has out there. Pete taking the ball, rolling that way. It's just one on one. There's nothing to read. The corner is off into the end zone almost. And when you get down that close, Keith, you've got to play him a little bit tighter. Beat six out of eight, 52 yards, and the Trojans are first down and goal from inside the seven. Tailback Knight to the five. And it was a hard two yards he picked up. Stephen Webster, who had won the job in the spring, injured his good ankle playing basketball in the summertime and he's still gimpy gipping around on well, two sore ankles Larry Smith wasn't too happy about it either because he won the job in the spring and Smith said don't go play basketball this summer he did and sprained his other ankle he's the speedster they need Knights a tough strong running back pass in the end zone incomplete off the hands of Randy Turner Tanner had it on his hands 
but he had defensive coverage Todd Crum there and Crum may have put a hand up in his face or even gotten a piece of the ball no containment on Pete gets outside you can see very well a nice play by they Crum right there just tipping the ball away just one finger looked like you know Crum is not a corner he's a free safety last year he played corner was playing corner at that on that play third down and goal from outside the six fumble by Rodney Pete on the snap he covers the ball and brings up fourth down for Southern California so the Trojans with their second opportunity to get a touchdown can't punch it in and Take they'll a send the kicking team on he just dropped it. I think he was surprised at the snap. Sometimes the center snaps it and starts blocking before the ball is back there. Oh, that time, back say that. Uh, I know, but that time I'm not blaming the quarter. I'm not blaming the center. That time it was a quarterback. I've done that many times myself. The ball's there, and Rodney didn't move. He was looking at those linebackers, and he was surprised. Rodriguez for the field goal try. 25 yarder is good. So he's hit from 23. And hit from 25, so the freshman out of Mesa, Arizona, has put up six points for the Trojans. 12-33 to go in the first half of play. Michigan State leading 10-6. And Affholter will kick off for Southern California to Craig Johnson and Blake Ezor of Michigan State. Affholter, the long-range kicker for USC. Ezor, on the last return, brought it out 38 yards. In fact, on both kickoffs, Michigan State has come up with very good field position. This will be Johnson. And this time, they stop him just short of the 20. One of my favorite people is back home again in East Lansing. Irvin Johnson with Mike Adamley. Keith, you've got that right. You mentioned the attention attendance was over 77,000 tonight. There's no big, more bigger uh, Spartan rooter than uh, Irvin Johnson, class of 1979, when you led the Spartans to a national championship. How do you enjoy the game so far? Well, I'm loving it so far. Uh, we got off to a good start. Uh, they're making a strong comeback, but the Spartans are in there winning the game. Tommy Lorsorda once said that he bleeds Dodger blue and white. Do you bleed Spartan green and white? You got it all the way. Uh, you know, I love Michigan State and all the people that uh, I come in contact with uh, being here as a college student. And I'm also enjoying coming back to the games now as an alumni. <laughs> it is it is nice to be home, isn't it? It is. It, it's the love that people give you and that you receive here. It's always nice coming back and just uh, seeing everybody and also seeing the changes that have uh, come about since you were a student and to now. I know Dr. Jerry Buss is out here. He's a USC. He used to be a collegiate professor there. Do you have a friendly wager on this game? Oh, yeah. A, a few dollars. <laughs> I won't mention how many, but uh, he's pulling for SC and I'm pulling for Michigan State. Okay, good to see you. Thank Keith? You. All right, Mike, thanks very much. Second down and one off that scramble by Bob McAllister and the Trojans this time as a penalty flag flies into the pile. We'll stop the Michigan State man. Lorenzo White hit this time by Tim Ryan. Looked like Adam Lee was standing in a hole down there interviewing <laughs> Magic. <laughs> I'll bet you it's holding against Michigan State. I'll bet you that uh, Magic is awful happy to come home and get away from all the hype of the big city after his last season. 58 is Cotton. Marcus Cotton. Let's take a look and see what happens with blocking uh, going against uh, Hool 74. Hool does a nice job blowing him off the line of scrimmage as you see Hol Coulter number eight. And looks like Marcus looks at him and said, hey, you got a holding. What is this? And that was probably who the holding was on. Well, they've, uh, they've been putting Mandarich and Poole. The big tackles have been sort of tracking Marcus Cotton so far, and he has only now uh, one assist in the tackle department. So he's been pretty quiet. That was a wristband of McAllister, and on it is written poise and confidence, and there are a few plays on there also. Second down, 11, Michigan State. The ball back in near the 20-yard line. This is Lorenzo. A whirling dervish, and he is finally hauled down by Rex Moore, the senior inside linebacker. There isn't no defense. There isn't any defense for this man right here. You can have him defensed, and he can cut back one way or the other. You've got to stay in your lanes. If you're a defensive man, you cannot pursue too quickly because he's got tremendous cutback ability. The 
poise and confidence we saw on uh, Callister's uh, wristband. It reminds me of my days at Purdue as a quarterback when I first started. Those were the two words. The last words I looked up on my uh, little cheat sheet on the sideline had poise and confidence. Jack Mullen, probably. That's for sure. Third down and seven. McAllister deep. Cotton's after him. Unloads the pass just before Cotton gets there. The pass is caught complete and will be short of the first down. Lorenzo White making the catch. McAllister got the first taste of Marcus Cotton in that time. Take a good look at the pocket. It's just a little screen pass. McAllister gets knocked away. Gibson 92 gets a part of it. And then the rest of it uh, catches up. So it's fourth down. And Montgomery is in the punt. Greg Montgomery averaged almost 48 yards per punt. And here's another howitzer. Back goes Randy Tanner from his 22. Comes back to the 29, 28. That'll do it. Montgomery, 54 yards on his first punt in 1987. He was one punt short last year of qualifying to win the title. Coach didn't know it. <laughs> and literally just forgot to give him a chance. State 10, USC 6, and tonight's ABC Sports Exclusive, brought to you by the two automobile divisions of American Honda. We invite you to see the new exciting lines of Honda and Acura automobiles today and by the new longer lasting Energizer batteries. The football is just short of the 29 of Southern California. Trojans have it first down. And Ryan Knight remains the tailback. The Roy Holt is the fullback. Rodney Pete the quarterback. Tanner and Jackson wide out along with Henry. Pete throwing a lot of passes. Comes one, Henry with great leaping ability, goes up high to haul it down, and first down USC at their own 44. Pick up close to 15 yards. We mentioned a little earlier that Larry Smith, the head coach, was a little surprised at the, the lack of speed. His receivers have pretty good speed. Henry more of a possession receiver. That's not to say he doesn't have good speed, but not as much as uh, the receivers for uh, uh, Michigan State have rising tremendous speed as you see just a little curl to the inside nice reception from the 44 Knight the tailback seemingly lost his balance as he tried to get his feet from on under him and uh, generate some leverage going into the stack he'll pick up on the play just over a yard American League scores Detroit which has had some trouble down in Texas bouncing back so far tonight against Baltimore the Tigers the big story state. around this part of the country knocked out of first place in the American League East last night California a loser today and state. Minnesota a winner today in the American League West while uh, Seattle beat Cleveland second down and nine from the 45. <laughs> Looks at Tanner, throws at him, and it's incomplete. Randy had gone out and made a turn, was standing. Rodney may have been a bit late, effecting the play, but I'll tell you this, if he'd have pumped one time and Tanner turned it upfield, it's six. There was nobody back there. National League, as you can see, game's in progress right now. San Francisco trying to hammerlock the National West, while St. Louis was a loser today. Cincinnati beat Los Angeles in the West. And the tail enders there. Atlanta and San Diego. Third down and nine. Sideline got a man. Jackson hauls it in. First down. Southern California inside the Michigan State 30. Excellent throw, Rodney Pete, right on the money. Pete plays for the uh, SC baseball team has a great arm as a shortstop. He's going to throw to the top of your screen, top left, as you see right there, throwing over Peyton, 24. Watch him lay this ball right on the money in front of the safety who was deep. Nice shot, nice play. Pete now 8 for 12 and 93 yards. And the ball is just over the 30. Pete hands the ball off inside, this time getting his first carry of the ball game, Leroy Holt. A 215 pound sophomore from Carson, California. Here's Larry Chambers <laughs> doing his thing in the night sky here in East Lansing over Spartan Stadium. 
We had a little bad weather uh, about an hour and a half, two hours before the ball game, and uh, I don't think I would have wanted to be up there with him at that point. In fact, I know I didn't want to be up there. Second down, call it eight. All resting precisely on the 28-yard hash mark. Heat getting heat. Drops the football. Trojans recover it at their own 38. So Rodney Pete getting tremendous pressure from the penetrating Michigan State defense. Dropped the ball, but Leroy Holt trying to drop back and be the protector of the quarterback saw the loose ball and recovered it. Thanks to uh, the back, the stunning defense. 40, 45 is uh, Bergen. Coming around the defensive end, he tried to change hands. I think he was going to try and duck up inside of him, but uh, costly fumble there, third down and long. Joe Bergen playing that defensive end position, number 45, and Coach Perler says he's, a, he's just an overachiever. He just doesn't know when to quit. So he's only six foot one. Long, deep pass down the middle is incomplete. John Jackson running a post route, and it is overthrown. So the Trojans will punt. From this point on the field, Spurl is in. His first kick tonight was 34. This is where you want the hang time. This is where you want to kill that ball deep. Distance doesn't matter. Exactly. You want to keep kick it out of bounds inside the 10 or hang it high so your coverage people can get downfield. From the lone deep man for Michigan State. He's got it high, hit a knuckleball. Could be a very good kick. Trojans are back there to cover it, and they're going to kill it deep at the six-yard line. So the putter, Chris Burrow, does his job as the Trojans kill the ball back at the Michigan State six with 7.06 to play in the first half. Michigan State leads by four. All right, the Michigan State offense to the field now from their own six and there's some degree of pressure here on the USC defensive people because the attitude of Larry Smith and his staff was to go from a read and react defensive posture to one of aggressive. Well I'm not sure that's the best style of defense against a slashing style of runner as Lorenzo White. And you got to figure White gets the ball here. He's in the back of the eye formation and has the ball and uh, Trojan had him inside the five but he got loose to about the nine. Dan Owens had him inside the five yard line, number 90, and couldn't hold him. It's a straight blocking up front. He's just going to give the ball to Renzo, let him pick a hole. He sees nothing inside. 63 there is uh, Kula gets stuffed on his line of the side of the line of scrimmage, so he just bounces it outside. Mark Carrier knocked him out of bounds. Right now, 11 carries, 58 yards. And Blake Ezor is now in a tailback, replacing Lorenzo White. And they go to the fullback. And uh, Joe Pugh moves it up across the 10, close to the 13. So here's Ezor, who's a uh, 185-pound sophomore out of Las Vegas. But he's another slashing runner and very quick. Lots of speed, and you really, as a defense, cannot let down if you see Lorenzo White go out of the ballgame, because this man here can really move him. White comes right back in after a brief breather now. And Ezor comes out. It is third down and short three. McAllister keeping it. Has the first down. Roll out of bounds by Mark Carrier. But not until he is in the neighborhood of the 25-yard line. Mobility is so important uh, in a quarterback, whether you're playing in uh, this level or the level uh, at, uh, below this in high school or in the pros, if you can move around, you can put more pressure on the defense. And McAllister certainly has that ability. He's seven out of eight in passing for 42 yards. He's run four times for 40. And so I'd say so far his <laughs> de debut has been a success. Yes, sir. It's first down, Spartan. Near the 26. McAllister keeps it after the fake to White, delivers toward Ryzen. Pass was thrown too low, and Andre couldn't come up with it. It's a poor pass there. Ryzen was wide open, and McAllister knows it. And he said, 
doggone it, I had him. Well, there's one thing you got to do. We noticed it last week in the kickoff classic when Francis of Tennessee was throwing the ball. Almost every time he missed the pass, the ball was to the outside. In this instance, the ball was inside. It was low, but it was inside, and that's dangerous when your receiver's going to the outside. Well, that's still better than being high and inside, because if <laughs> it's high and inside, it. it's going the other way. That's right. <laughs> Poole is out now, and Kevin Robbins is in a tackle for Michigan State. McAllister pumps one down the middle, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Andre Rison. He unloaded it before I think he wanted to, but I don't think he had a whole lot of choice. It was either that or uh, head for the cemetery. Well, he didn't. He, he, after it. he didn't have a lot of choice. As Ryan, the uh, the sophomore defensive end, we're Take a look right here at uh, the uh, defensive lineman rising. I mean, uh, Ryan, as he comes inside, there's a play action fake, and into the inside, he's got a lot of time here. Well, oh, I was looking at the wrong one, I guess, yeah. because he had plenty of time. He just slipped down on his own. Third down, Michigan State four out of seven. This is third down at 10, and McAllister running out of time, throws a dangerous pass, kind of threw it up for grabs, actually. Cowett was over there defending. Pass looked like it was intended for Yusevich, and it goes incomplete. So Montgomery comes onto the field. Greg's first punt tonight was 54 yards, first punt of the season. Rogers in one man back. They got 10 people up on the line. They're going after him again, trying to put some pressure on him. One man's got to be uncovered up there, so the man on the high left side of your picture uncovered. But Montgomery stepped the other way and got it away, and here's a penalty flag in the air as the kick sails all the way down to the 19 to Randy Tanner. And Randy Tanner is cut down at about the 24. Was that a penalty flag I saw? Yes, it's all the way back at the 25-yard line. Was it Cowett offside? Well, if uh, offside, of course, is, uh, is a five-yarder, they were looking at fourth and ten. If it was, in fact, an offside. Let's see what the call is. The illegal procedure call seems to be going against Michigan State, which would mean undoubtedly that one of the interior linemen picked up his hand, moved some. The plan was for Montgomery to take a step, either right or left, to take one step away from the uncovered Trojan. Illegal procedure, offense, still fourth down. And so they're going to make him kick it again. Well, the plan was to have him step away from the man that wasn't blocked. He knows the blocking scheme. and. Uh, as you said, they can't block them all, but this is a this is a situation that gave uh, Perlis a lot of concern is the punt blocking. It cost uh, Montgomery a 56-yard punt. See what it can do here. That snap was high, pressure was on, and it's not as good. It's higher, and Tanner takes it at the 38, shakes one, and comes back to about the 43. So that's a gain of 19 yards for Southern California. As this time the punt goes 42 and the return is four. And Cowett was the man that got the pressure on the punter, Montgomery. Got a timeout, 5.35 to go. Here we'll be down in Ann Arbor. Don Cannon's big old house to watch Bo Schembechler and Lou Holt match wits next Saturday. It's been 10 years since I've done a football game here at Spartan Stadium. I was here in 77 for the Michigan, Michigan State game. First down and 10 from the 43 for Southern California. Beat tonight. Three yards as he gets to the 46. Jeff Snow leading Michigan State now in individual tackles. Snow has four. Well, that's as advertised. The middle linebacker, Snow, not uh, not real big, only uh, 6'3 and 211 pounds, but playing behind that stunning front four, there aren't going to be many big offensive linemen getting on him. You got a Michigan State player hurt on the play. That is Mark Nichols, their, their, their prime defensive tackle, a big senior, 260 pounder from Bloomfield Hills. So we've got a timeout taken in Mark's behalf with 5.22 to play in the first half. Chris Sunland will go in at tackle replacing Mark Nichols. Mark walked off the field a bit wobbly, but seemingly uh, recovering. 
It is second down and seven for Southern California. Rodney Pete rolls it out, rolls it out, throws it to the sidelines, and it's good. Caught on the sidelines, but caught just short of the marker by John Jackson. John is a sophomore from Diamond Bar. He normally wears number one. He's wearing 82 tonight because uh, his jersey was one of one stolen. One of two stolen. Two, one of two yeah. stolen yeah. from the lock of five coming. <laughs> Whoever was in there took two and not one. And, and a fun. helmet. They took a helmet. Wanted to make a clock. Well, the Trojans to this point have only rushed for 26 yards in 16 carries. So their rushing is not doing too well. And as advertised, as you take a look right there, 105 yards through the air. Third and uh, half a yard of Southern California. Marcus Hopkins, a freshman in the ball game, carries and dives for the first down. Marcus Hopkins is one of three top freshman tailbacks. Six footer, 185 pound freshman from San Diego, California. He is out of the same high school that produced Marcus Allen. Well, he's and got his the, first carry, he gets first down. Got the right first name for it. Yes, sir. <laughs> So USC first down at the Michigan State 44 with four minutes and 55 seconds to play in the first half and state leading 10 to 6. Beat back. Goes big down the middle. Jackson just beyond the fingertips and a penalty flag. Might have a little personal foul back up the field. I think there was a bit of a scuffle going on up around the 40 yard line. And it's one of those that might go either way. It's again the Trojans, I think. Gordy Reese. Oh, I've got an ineligible man downfield. And roughing the passer, so Two they are offsetting. Yep. I didn't see the second flag. It was thrown back up here behind the quarterback after the play was done, and uh, the other flag was dropped on the 40. I think it was Dave Cadigan <laughs> way down the field. I don't know what he's doing downfield. They say he runs like a linebacker, though, so maybe he's trying to show off some of his speed. So it is still first and ten from the 44. Beach pass is thrown underneath, and it is incomplete to John Jackson. Got a fight for the ball. Michigan State man Tim Moore, the outside linebacker for the Spartans, thinking that perhaps he had caught the ball and then fumbled it, was having quite a bit of a scuffle with John. Inside right here, Tim Moore is 42. One of the outstanding linebackers for uh, Penn State. Ball is on the ground. Uh, Moore <laughs> thinks it's a fumble. He got high hopes for Moore. He's replacing uh, two former All-American linebackers, Carl Banks and um, Anthony Bell, playing the position. I mentioned a little earlier, Keith is an orphan. And George Perla says he is mean on the football field. Second down and 10 for USC. Pass thrown to the outside. Randy Tanner has it. And Randy has wrestled out. Just inside the 43 by Derek Reed, who came to Michigan State to start at left cornerback from SMU. He's a junior. Coming up at halftime, we'll have a visit with Al Trotwick and Jim Hill. They'll be your co-hosts for our college football scoreboard show this year. So we'll have a visit with Al and Jim, and we'll have a special feature coming from the field here at Spartan Stadium in our salute to Labor and Little Star Lee Greenwood. Third down. And four for USC now. Four twenty-nine. The play in the first half. Pete on third down throws batted up in the air at the line of scrimmage and incomplete forward pass, and it is fourth down. I think it was Joe Bergen that got up there and got a hand on it. Well, if he did, he had to jump up because he, like I said, he's only six one and two twenty. He is really undersized. Take a look right here as you see the rush. Not much penetration. Yep. And you're right. The problem there is Cadigan did not keep pressure or contact with the Bergen and allowed Bergen to jump up 
uh, without having any pressure or uh, being pushed. Chris Spurl in for his third punt of the night. First two have been 34-32, but the 32 is a little misleading. It was very effective because they killed the ball back on the six-yard line. And he's got this one up the silo again. Check the bounce. And the Trojans mark it inside the five, down near the four. If it didn't hit a USC man up the field, I thought it might have hit one of the Trojans on the back of the leg a little farther upfield. But and it did. That's where the first beanbag is thrown down. So it's up uh, around the 10 yard line. Well, next Monday night, you've got your season premiere matching the New York Giants and Chicago Bears on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The pregame show will start at 8.30 Eastern Time here on ABC. Next Monday night, Dan Deardorff joining the Monday Night Guys. That ought to be an outstanding game, Keith. There'll be some feelings in it. <laughs> There'll be some bruises in it, too. A little proven, I think, on both sides there. Blake Ezor is the tailback now for Michigan State. Number 26. He's the Las Vegas sophomore. Got a big hole over the left side. He's a burner. And he's out to the 35-yard line. Mark Carrier brought him down. No, they're going to mark him short of 35. They, hit, they say he hit the sidelines back near the 25. It's the line blocking up front. Mandridge, 63 is Kula coming out. Big hole. Nice block downfield on uh, Garner, number nine. He hit the sidelines and uh, <laughs> stepped out of bounds at the 25-yard line. From the blimp. He's or again. And this time, number 90, Dan Owen, grabs a hold of him and wrestles him down after a yard pickup. Lock easing along now as we go to 3.55 to play in the first half. Michigan State game started with a burst as the Spartans took it right down and scored. Big play being a 31-yard run by Lorenzo White. But things have calmed down since that time. The play is called upstairs and then wigwagged in from the sidelines to McAllister, the Michigan State quarterback. This is Ezor. Oh, that was some move he put on Mark Carrier and just stepped right over him and picked up the first down. Carrier had him dead to rights back around the 31 yard line and he just stepped right past him. This is an experienced offensive line that Ezor is running behind. As you see Davis number 60 has trouble getting over. Carrier 19 falls. Key offensive line and really the uh, Spartans are in fine uh, situation position. At the offensive uh, back with uh, White and Ezor. Michigan State has run for 132 yards so far tonight. Southern California 29. And this time the Trojans control Ezor as he goes to the open field. And he picks up one yard with Tim Ryan getting the tackle. Jim Moore started, but Joe Pugh came in quickly. As Bob said, Moore has a big pad on his uh, right hand because of a broken bone. And as long as Joe Pugh continues to do this kind of work, uh, they'll probably let Moore sit. No question about that. Pugh has done very well, both catching and running the ball and blocking. Uh, he's White is back in now, a tailback, and Ezor, after having his moment, comes out. And McAllister sets it up on a roll. And he is chased out of bounds by Marcus Cutton. So we call Marcus Cutton's name now as he rides McAllister into the USC crowd. And uh, the ball is marked just short of the 40. We were talking about the offensive front a while ago. Uh, this man, Marcus Cotton, is being tracked literally by either Tony Mandarich or David Hull. Now, Hull bench press is 525 <laughs> and Mandarich around 500. So uh, that's a pretty good. Uh, Not a bad idea to have one of those guys in front of uh, Marcus Cotton. It's some gristle, I'll tell you that. McAllister back. Good protection. Pass intercode. Drop right into the hands of Keith Davis. And Keither didn't know what to do with it. It was right on the numbers. 
and he dropped it. Well, he should have picked it off. It was a poor throw by McAllister. His man was open. He just underthrew it a little bit. This is one Davis is going to mumble about going home because it was right in his hand. Top of your screen. If he would have thrown the ball to the left or inside of Davis, Rising would have come, kept, kept coming, but the young quarterback will learn that in time. Tanner is deep. Montgomery to punt. Oh, he didn't get all of that one either. But he didn't have a whole lot of pressure on him. It dropped short of the return man. Is now going to roll around. And Tanner's going to leave it alone. It's a hot rock with all that crowd of Michigan State people back there. If he went over and picked it up, you know that jump is bones. So 51-yard punt with the roll. But not a Montgomery kick. It wasn't up to his Well, style. he's human, too. He watches those film. He know they have, knows they have a good pa uh, uh, rush against the punt. He can also throw the ball and pass it out of punt formation, but uh, he was trying to rush it a little bit. That time, they were not trying to block it. Ball is just inside the Southern California 10. Minute 50. The tailback, Hope the fullback. Knight has it. And we'll get a yard or so as Percy Snow belts him down. That's going to be, I think, six tackles for Snow. 1967. Look at this. O.J. Simpson. Steve Garvey, number 24, <laughs> defensive back for Michigan State. Getting O.J. in his sights. I don't know if he got him or not. Steve Garvey, the baseball player. <laughs> it's, it's kind of strange to see Steve in a football uniform. <laughs> He's a good player. But I'm sure the story goes that, uh, from Steve anyway, that he tackled him for a three yard loss. <laughs> this is uh, Knight sliding through, trying to pick up the pass from uh, Pete, the quarterback. But Rodney, running for his life, did not have a chance to get the ball to him because. That is a design play, and when Knight got through there clean and clear, but the pressure from the backside had forced Rodney Pete to run for his life. Well, the pressure is, is, is right on that man right there, as we said. The Rodney Pete, the, there's no running game for the Trojans whatsoever, and if they're going to make any yardage, it's going to have to come through the pass, and uh, that means he's going to have to produce. It is third down and three. Get the first down as Knight carries. Ball had to come out to the 20. And they have clearly marked it back near the 18 as Michigan State calls time to kill the clock with 59 seconds to play in the first half. Larry Smith and his people on the sidelines. George Perlis looking to put some pressure on Chris Spurl, the punter, and hopefully come up with field position. Smith said uh, earlier that one of the things he was surprised with when he got to Southern Cal, or pleasantly surprised, was the fact that there was the class of the players, of the athletes, and the whole uh, uh, system at, 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 at Southern Cal was. Uh, was really first class. He was very impressed with the, the players, uh, the uh, the athletic department, the administration uh, from top to bottom. Uh, he was maybe a little disappointed with the speed on the team, but certainly not uh, their character in class. Well, there is an old truth in football, as you well know. Big, fast people will normally beat little, fast people. <laughs> and uh, he's got the size, but right now lacks some of the speed. Todd Crum goes back to stand near his 40 to accept the punt now from USC's Chris Pearl. Ken Spartan's going after him, but he gets it out. Pretty good kick under that kind of pressure, and a fair catch is called back at the 44 of Michigan State. 38-yard punt, good hang time on it. And Todd Crum wasn't going to mess with it and make a mistake because he had a fumble early on, if you remember the ball game. And so he secures the catch and they place it just short of the 45 with 53 seconds to play in the first half. Plus, Keith, he had 10 men rushing the punter and almost blocked it. 
So he had no help downfield whatsoever. Well, Walter Camp once said the tricks are just that tricks. The only trick that really works is work. Let's see if they've got their trick play. Nope. Not that time. There's a loss back inside the 40. It was Tim Ryan, number 99, who came blowing in from his defensive tackle position to put him down, and now State going without a huddle. As McAllister drops back from his 36, throws to Ryzen on the sidelines, and Andre is pushed out of bounds by Cleveland Coulter with 28 seconds to play in the first half. Now they've got a chance to talk about it and try to set up a long play and give their place kicker, Langlow, a, a shot at it. Phyllis is impressed with uh, not only McAllister, his first team quarterback, but also Enos, his second team quarterback, and uh, feels like both of them could lead the Spartans to victory, but McAllister has earned the right to play as we see a timeout taken by now, McAllister. Not his fault, he just didn't get the right play. You, know, you kept calling and calling and calling for the play. Jeff Jacobs, uh, the other former SMU player, goes into the game as a wide receiver. And uh, McAllister did not understand the play or did not have the play. And that's the problem of sending the plays down from upstairs through the coach on the sidelines and then out to the quarterback. Here's Mike Adamley for a moment. We talked, we talked to Irvin Johnson a little bit earlier. Now Carl Banks there, Keith Jackson has mentioned you about four or five times tonight up in the booth. What's it like being back here in East Lansing? And I know the fans still love you as a Spartan. It's always great to be back home in uh, Michigan State. I love the score. I love the school, and it's a lot of excitement here. And it, it, it feels so good to be out here on the field. I got butterflies at the kickoff, just like I was playing all over again. Next Monday night in Chicago, you're going to have a little butterflies yourself. The game, the game everybody's been waiting for against the Chicago Bears. That's going to be a tough one, and it won't be an easy one for either team. Uh, Chicago's great offense and great defense, and we're going to have to prepare well. Was it, was it tough the last couple of preseason games playing the teams you were going against and still with the Bears in the back of your mind? No. Well, those teams wouldn't let us think of the Bears. As you know, uh, Saturday, the game against Pittsburgh was very tough in the, fourth, the second half, fourth quarter was really tough for us, and it was no longer a preseason game. Weren't you supposed to be at practice today? We had practice early. I caught a flight out. Okay, that's the way to do it. All right. All right. Good to see you, Carl. Good luck on Monday. All right. Carl Banks, part of the great linebacking core of the uh, New York Giants. Now we go back down on the field from our position here. The handoff goes to Lorenzo White. White bounces outside, and he is hammered down by Coet. Greg Coet, who plays that boundary side from that that uh, cornerback position coming up and laid a solid tackle on him. So it is now fourth down and at least six. Time running down. They've got time for one more play, but they're not going to get it off. I don't think either. Out. I don't think either team wants to take no. a timeout. I don't think so either. <laughs> Southern California are the only one with any remaining, and they didn't want it because they knew they had Michigan State in the hole on timeouts, and so time expired. So after the first half of play, ragged in spots, exciting in spots, the score at halftime, Michigan State 10, USC 6. Advantage, took the first drive right down, Lorenzo White doing a lot of it and scored. They scored on their second possession with a field goal, and that's been it. It's been defense ever since. What do you think now? Uh, is USC in a posture without an effective running game to turn it around or is well I think they have to start running at the corners they talked yesterday about gap blocking blocking down and everything and trying to run outside of all that stunning inside and I think that's what they have to do continue to try and get Rodney Pete outside and let him throw you know, don't throw up the, the, the game plan is was solid don't throw it away you know, let's just go out and execute yeah. it. And so far, George Perlis's game plan has been pretty good because his defensive folks have done just exactly what he's been training them to do. They lead by four at halftime. The sports exclusive being brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. There's no slowing down with a Silver Bullet. We're ready to go with the second half of play. USC won the toss, remember, deferred to the second half, so they get the ball. 
Johnny Langlow will kick it off for Michigan State. Cleveland Coulter, Gary Wellman, a pair of Flyers will be back to receive it for Southern California. Wellman number 83. 10-6, Spartans lead. Langlow's kick is very high. And taken by Coulter at the five. Got a hole. Last man got him. Well, not really the last man, but the last man to keep him from breaking it on the sidelines got him at the 26. We look at the statistics for the first half. The rushing yardage heavy for Michigan State. Passing for SC, and not a surprise there. The big play, the turnover, the fumbled punt by Crum. For Michigan State set up the only field goal, or one of the, the first field goal for Southern Cal. Mark Nichols starts defensively. He was injured in the first half, remember, for Michigan State defensive tackle. Randy Tanner goes in motion. Rodney Pete gives it to Ryan Knight. Ryan Knight in the first half at 37 yards. The rest of the Trojan runners minus one. And Ryan moves it from the 26 out to about the 31. Derek Reed made the tackle for Michigan State. The possessions in the first half, you can see Michigan State. Uh, well, they oh, that's USC there. Yeah, and, they punted four of six times, yeah. uh, but their field position was really not that poor. Uh, they put the ball in the 43, and in Michigan State, 21-yard line, the second possession. Rodney Pete loses the football. Michigan State's got the ball at the Southern California 25. So the Trojans fumble it, and the Spartans cover it. This was a sweep to the right, and then one of the guards, Parkinson, was pulling. I don't know whether or not the guard knocked the ball out of his hand, but sometimes this can happen. Take a look. Yep, that's exactly it what sure happened. Sure did. Parkinson, 71, knocked the ball out of his hands, and I think that's Pete's fault. Uh, Keith, he needs to get away from the center a little bit quicker. He was hanging around a little bit too long. John Buddy covered the loose ball for Michigan State. The Spartans go to work with Joe Pugh and Lorenzo White, and White has the ball. He's around the corner, and he's down to the 11. Bill Stokes finally brought him down. Tim Ryan was after him and couldn't catch him. On Michigan State's first drive of the game, White gained 49 yards and went in for a touchdown. This is the first drive of the second half, and it seems as though he's going to make it a touchdown himself, or he's going to he's going to take him down and get it in. So the Spartans have it first down at the USC 11. Six. White again. Cuts it back. Dives. Maybe the nine. Give him two. Brought down by Dan Owen. Michigan State opening up with Ryzen wide out. Tight end Mike Sargent. Poo, Tata, Sherman, Kula, Mandarich on the offensive front. No, nope, who's not out there? It's Kevin Robin Jr. out of Washington, D.C. 6'6, 285. Second down, eight from the nine. McAllister keeping it. Bobby McAllister has two blockers. Touchdown! That is Rex Moore, their inside linebacker, being helped from the field. He's dragging his left leg. In fact, dragging both legs right there. Loss of Moore, a big loss for the Trojan defensive unit. John Langlow in for the extra point. Looking for his fifth point of the night. Good. Southern 
California turns it over and Michigan State cashes it in. This was a run all the way, Keith, as a two. He comes out very flat. If he was a pass, watch the block here on Marcus Cott, the All-American linebacker. Right there, he's knocked off his feet. That's Pew, 38. Outstanding play, great blocking, run all the way. And Michigan State opens it up to a 17-6 lead. The advanced new Chevy half-ton is all new. Ford isn't. And the advantages stack up. Chevy gives you new two-tier loading. Ford doesn't. More two-sided galvanized steel. A bigger, heavier frame. And on top of it all, more standard power with Vortec V6. Decade. The heartbeat of America. Next week on the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football. Let's go back and take another look. Here's Pew, the fullback. Now, watch the block that he throws on the All-American linebacker, Marcus Cotton, the spring. McAllister into the end zone for the touchdown. Outstanding block. And another one by Boyer, 17, to get him into the end zone. Good execution. Michigan State's plan to uh, have their big tackles track cotton tonight. Very effective. He has only two tackles in the ball game. All right, 13.06 to go, third quarter, 17 to 6, Spartans, and they will kick it off now with Coulter and Wellman deep. That's long and high, and it's back to the three for Coulter. Again, gets a crack, trying to cut back to it, and his penalty flags all over the field. Almost depend on it being a clip. By the receiving team during the run back. I think First you down. could have had your druthers there, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> they called it holding. All right, the football will come back now. The Trojans will start in the hole from their own 14. First down, trailing by 11 points. Holt and Knight line up behind Pete. to about the 16, and here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, you know there's a lot of proud parents in the audience tonight, but none prouder than Lorenzo White's mom, Gloria. Gloria, I saw that you arrived at the game a little bit late. You didn't miss his, Lorenzo's touchdown run, did you? No, I stood up while he ran it in. I just stood back there. I didn't want to try to get into the crowd. Now, you made the trip all the way from Florida. Get that thing out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Upstage by a balloon. Yeah, I came in just to see the game and to, um, see what kind of condition when he was going to be in for the first game and I was well pleased during the summer months when he was practicing but I said I wanted to see him out on the field against a, a competitive team so therefore I've seen that first touchdown now I'm all ready for the rest of the season so a little home cooking and a little tender love and care has made uh, Lorenzo a complete player this year he's he's happy and healthy again right he's, health, he's healthier He's more happier, and we got more spirit this year than we had before because this year, this is his year. I agree. Keith? <laughs> All right, Mike, thanks very much. Proud mama. Trojans have picked up the first down on a pass to John Jackson, and now they have a little better breathing territory outside as they give it inside to Holt. Penalty flag going to nullify a good run by Leroy Holt. He carried the ball for about 10 yards, but you got a pretty quick flag. And I won't be surprised if you don't get a holding call here. Yep. So the Trojans hurting themselves. They've been doing it all night. 
Well, Larry Smith, I told him yesterday that he was holding offense. Sort of in the same down. position as the old Greek tutor, you know. It's a two-edged sword. First you got to unlearn, and then you got to learn. And uh, you can't always do it. When you're so in this business, you, it helps to have a good memory, but it also helps to uh, forget very quickly. You have to learn new things and then uh, forget them. U.S. Open tennis, uh, Brad Gilbert knocked off Boris Becker in one of the major upsets. In fact, the only upset so far of any consequence in the U.S. Open. So Becker goes down to Gilbert. First down and 20 now. And they'll take it on the ground with Ryan Knight and pick up a couple of yards. There just hasn't been much room in the middle for Southern California's running game. Let's go inside and see why they're not running. Here are the two defensive tackles. This one is Davis and Nichols. They are going to cross and really foul up the things going on inside. The center tries to block back. Davis, 75 crosses. You've got a lot of angles going in there. It's just tough to run inside. Perla says we defense from the inside out. Second down, Pete rolls it. Gets it away, complete to Henry. Henry is thrown out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Wrestled out as Travis Davis was putting the pressure on the quarterback, Rodney Pete. Keith, if the Trojans are going to do anything in the second half, they have to work outside the offensive tackles. There's too much crisscrossing and stunning inside, both running outside and scrambling and throwing outside, just as Pete did then. All right, Ryan Knight leaves. Marcus Hopkins makes his second appearance. He's carried the ball one time, the freshman out of San Diego, and he picked up the first down. He has great ability, but he's still a baby. Throws a pretty good block, giving Pete time, and Pete, I think, looking for Jackson to come back inside, uh, threw it that way, and they miss connections, and it brings up fourth down, and they'll have to punt it away. Yeah, he just overthrew it. The receivers were not open, and uh, I think he just threw it away. Smart, uh, smart choice. He was standing in the middle of a storm, but there was no <laughs> real pressure on him, actually. No one was within five yards of him. Chris Burrell now for his fifth punt of the night. His best one has been 38 yards. Todd Crum, the lone receiver for Michigan State. They've got 10 Spartans to put the pressure on. Burrell spins it out, can't get it to turn over. Crum accepts it, eludes one, and then goes down as, who is that, Marcus Cutton? Nope, number 56 downfield, Jack Brian Tulio, a freshman linebacker, making the tackle, and Michigan State will start from their own 35. 27 yards on the kick. First down, Michigan State, then coached under him. Duffy has been ill, quite ill, in the hospital. The world loves Duffy Doherty. And those who have played for him and coached under him and know him, well, their feelings, I think, expressed beautifully yesterday by George Perlis. When you think of Duffy, you think of a great football coach. You think of someone uh, that treats you like a father. But you think of humor. You think of the good things in life, laughing, having fun. The football building here bears Duffy Doherty's name, and it should. He's a rare kind of a human being. The world loves him. I love him. And Duff, you get well, and you bring that 14 handicap on down there and steal some more from him. We had some good games up here against Duffy. He's an outstanding man. Great man. First down from the 35 for Michigan State. Reverse, Andre Risen. Trojans track it pretty well, and he loses his footing, cutting back at the 36, and there is a penalty flag. And when you get that many people strung out on an old, a wide field reverse like that, penalties come easy. Flip is against Michigan State, and here are some baseball scores of games earlier today on this Labor Day holiday and games going on at the present time in the American League. Detroit jumping all over Baltimore and New York jumping on Boston with Texas Oakland just in the fourth inning now National League Philadelphia beating the Mets 4 2 and uh, San Francisco Houston even in the sixth inning the penalty moves the football back to the 21 yard line so they're looking at first down and 24. With Lorenz 
Lorenzo White. And he moves it up to about the 25 for a gain of four yards. And it looks like the Southern California defensive people have come out determined to play a little wilder game here in the second half. American League, those are all final scores in the American. California losing to Kansas City, but Minnesota winning in the American League West. It's not the Trojan defense as we take a look at some more finals in the National League that really needs to get on track, Keith. It's yep. their offense that needs to get some That's points right. on the board. That's right. Trying to make something happen. McAllister, play action. Eludes one, but can't elude two. Number 92, Don Gibson locked him down, and Tim Ryan finished him off, and the loss is back to the 17-yard line. Gibson's an interesting story. His brother played for Larry uh, Smith at uh, Arizona. And when uh, Smith came over to SC and knew that Don Gibson was there, he says there's good stock in that Gibson family. <laughs> Third down and 28 now, as they've got to go just over the 45 to get their first down. Ryzen and Jacobs with the white people. McAllister's got some room outside. Caught from behind, fumbled the ball. Southern California covers it. So the Spartans turn it over on their end of the field, about the 32-yard line. Marcus Cotton is the man covering the football. I think Greg Cowett, number 46, knocks the ball loose. Let's take a look here as the McAllister begins to lose his balance. And he's going to get hit just before he goes down. It's uh, it's close, but I think it... Uh, I don't know, that was a pretty close call. First down, ball market just inside the 33, close to the 32, and short pass thrown underneath to number 86. That's Scott Galbraith into the ball game. Sophomore out of Sacramento. He pulls the catch in uh, about the 26, but let's look at a penalty flag right here and see what we've got. We're going to snow on the play for State. Was a head slap against Michigan State. I think it was a spear. I think he speared him spear. at the Could end there, uh, Keith. Nonetheless, it's a major penalty against Michigan State, and we look forward to Saturday Building afternoon. Contact with the helmet on a defense, automatic first down. So it goes with an automatic first down, and it's a break for Southern California on uh, an overly enthusiastic mistake by Michigan State. Notre Dame's Fighting Irish and the Michigan Wolverines. We begin it at 3 o'clock Saturday afternoon here on ABC Sports. The opening game for both teams. That's a tough opener for both teams, too. Marcus Hopkins is the tailback for Southern California. The freshman, he's got the ball. He's in traffic. And he loses the football, and Michigan State's recovered it. That's the cloud that goes with playing such a young player. Mark Nichols, the veteran defensive tackle, comes out of the stack with a football. So Michigan State, having turned it over, fights back and recovers the ball. It's the problem when you play a true freshman. He has not been uh, at Southern Cal very long. He gets in a ball game, a big ball game, and turns it over. Yeah, I doubt very much that he's ever been hit quite as hard as he got hit on that play. Timeout. Watch as he gets his right arm on the football and knocks it loose from Marcus Hopkins. Just magnifying the problem that Southern Cal is having at their tailback position. Yep. Knight, Ryan Knight has carried the ball 17 times for 46 yards. All the other tailbacks that Larry Smith has tried has gone for minus seven. Two fumbles, two holding penalties, and a sack in this half. Michigan State with the ball now, working from their 16. This is Bobby McAllister, the quarterback. Looking for all the world like a tailback as he wiggles his way through traffic and gets the football up near the 34-yard line before Chris Hale brings him down. No question, it's a design rollout 
with McAllister using his ability to run the football. It's a safe play. It's like a sweep with two blocking backs ahead of him. He's picked up 60 yards so far in the ballgame. Blake Ezor is now the tailback for Michigan State. Jacobs and Ryzen double wide top of the picture. Ezor. He keeps those legs plowing. Don Gibson got a hold of him, but he didn't surrender easily. You know, it's interesting that we have a Heisman Trophy contender in Lorenzo White here tonight, and Blake Ezor is getting so much playing time. I think it's a smart move. Last year, he had a knee and ankle injury, and, and uh, Perlis feels as though if you've got two good running backs, why not spell Lorenzo off now and then to keep him fresh when he's in the ballgame? Ezor's carried five times for 32 yards. It is second down and six for Michigan State. From the 38, got it again. Got the hole on the right side, and then there is a collision at the 40. Words that Bill Russell used to say, basketball is a contact sport. Football is a collision. <laughs> I'm, reminded, I'm reminded of... Uh, what Marcus Cotton likes to say, the linebacker for Southern Cal, he says, I like to play basketball. He says, basketball was my first love. He says, I like to slam dunk it in basketball. And then he says, in fact, I like to slam dunk in football. <laughs> he says, the quarterbacks don't bounce. He's been slam dunked himself a couple of <laughs> he times. He certainly yeah. has. Lorenzo yes. White is back in there now. <laughs> McAllister takes it the other way. Gets outside and has a man. Pass is complete at the Southern California 48-yard line. Catches by Jeff Jacobs, who came here from SMU, number 14. Jacobs is working on Hale to the outside. And if he has double coverage, he should. Hale should have been more to the outside because he had help from the inside by number 13, Marie, but he wasn't playing his technique properly, and it's, you know, it's a mistake that a young defensive back is going to make. Well, Jacobs is not a gimme. He caught 52 oh, at SMU last year. He certainly did. Ezor back in at tailback. Has the ball. Well, he's, he's a gritty kid at 185 pounds. He's just hammering into those big guys in the middle, and he moves the ball to the 45. Keith Davis, the inside backer, hit him. Rex Moore, Davis. incidentally, is being taken to x-rays. Ankle, his problem. Now the tailbacks are alternating. He's are out and right back in. Second down, seven. Running game, Michigan State 177 yards, USC 37. McAllister, pressure coming from the backside. Stokes, he gets it away just in time. Ryzen makes the catch at the two. First and goal, Michigan State. Great catch, Ryzen. Ryzen with all kinds of speed. This is the first time as he starts his little out move. Hale again, the reserve cornerback, is in there. He makes a nice adjustment. One foot, his left foot is on the ground, and a nice reception. 44 yards, as you see, Ryzen with his eyes on the ball all the way. Played quarterback in high school, went to the same high school as Mark Ingram, the number one draft choice uh, out of Michigan State, now playing with the New York Giants. Outstanding play. This will go in the books as a one-yarder because it is marked right in between the one and two hash marks. McAllister, White, touchdown! Take a look at the line surge for the Spartans. All you have to do is get a stalemate. And just a little crease for a halfback to jump over, and Lorenzo White, with plenty of distance, gets it in for his second touchdown of the night. And the Spartans now threatening to put this one away. Langlow is in for the extra point. 
and it's good. Yes. Lorenzo White, 16 carries, 82 yards, two touchdowns, 5-16 to go, third quarter, 24-6, Michigan State. Pope up in the blimp. America that's floating around above the stadium with Captain Larry Chambers carrying one of our cameras. Michigan State now is zeroing in on a win here with 24 to 6, and they have to have Southern California totally frustrated at this juncture. And so far, Southern California has uh, been a one legged offense in this ballgame. That's Rodney Pete. Pete's tried, done the best he could, but uh, he's 13 of 21 with 136 yards. As you see, that last scoring drive, 84 yards, and of course, the big play was the pass to Ryzen. And I'm also impressed with McAllister, how well he is running from the quarterback position. This kid's got a heck of a leg. Look at that. He knocked it six yards deep into the end zone, forcing no return. So Southern California will have to start from the 20. And Bobby McAllister. Well, they're going to they're gonna call this the South Florida connection with McAllister from Pompano Beach and Lorenzo White from Fort Lauderdale. I think Biggie Munn and Duffy started it. Now let's see if Southern California holds together here and gets something going offensively. Ryan Knight and Leroy Holt in the I formation behind Rodney Feet. Ken Henry is he caught one ball tonight. This is Knight, the tailback. And there is nothing there as the Michigan State people cover it well. And led by Percy Snow. And again, it's the people up front with their slanting and their angles out of that stunt 4-3, enabling the middle linebacker to get the tackle. There's no surprise that this defense is the same defense that he used all of last year that led the Big Ten in rushing defense. As you take a look there at what Knight and the other Southern Cal runners have done this evening. Pete keeps the ball, drills it into a crowd, and will come out of it with a reception. Number 17, Paul Green, the tight end, but the catch is made for only seven yards up to the 27, and they're looking at third down and three. Ken Henry has caught three balls tonight, totaling 31 yards. So he's been pretty quiet. Turner, uh, Tanner has been pretty quiet too. Ball never came back on the snap. Pete started to pull away and he didn't have the football. Well, I think he forgot the snap count that time. Uh, <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Dead ball, all start offense, still third down. If the quarterback moves, well, no, everybody else was, well, the left side was moving, the right side wasn't. Evidently, the left side hurt him a lot better than the right side. You know, Rodney, uh, his father is an assistant coach for the Green Bay Packers and was an assistant in Arizona for a while under Larry Smith. In fact, Rodney was the water boy over there for a while and said it was a tough decision a few years ago not to go to Arizona when Smith was the head coach. On third and eight, pass is thrown to the sidelines. Good for a first down to John Jackson. And Johnny is up across the 40 to the 40, close to the 44, before Lanier Payton wrestles him down. And so Pete comes up with a big play to get off the hook at 3.37 to go in the third quarter. Jackson working on uh, the left side, wide side of the field on Payton. Just goes seven yards and out, and that's all you needed. Five, third down and five. From the 43. Fullback Holt bouncing outside, but is caught by number 42, Tim Moore, and Moore takes him down. He's going to lose a yard on that. Second down, 11. Last year, the Trojans were beaten on the ground. But there are four Heisman trophies in Heritage Hall, all tailbacks. They could use one now. Knight blows it up the middle. 
And one of the better gains of the night for Ryan Knight as he moves from the 42 to the 48. Percy Snow, one more tackle. If they could take it and stick it in the end zone, they're still in the hunt. Well, the key thing to do here, Keith, is not to panic. There's plenty of time on the scoreboard. They just need to get some production and some points out of these drives. Third down play. Long five. Peach pass, sideline, Henry Good. First down to the 44. So they're now six out of 13 on third down conversions in the ball game. Pete this half is six of seven for 66 yards and they're still throwing the short stuff Keith they're going down 10 12 yards and just breaking to the outside the tight end in the middle of the field just hooking they're not challenging anybody deep I think at some point in time you're gonna to have to stretch the secondary and they can respect the deep throw we really haven't seen a foot race all night have we? no we haven't might have one here now the deep men broke off the route now Tanner trying to come back does and makes the catch and Tanner had almost given up on the play and then he saw Pete curl out from behind the crowd and then he came back to the ball and picks up the big play to the 20. Well Tanner is up here and this time he is going to go deep he's going to go deep to the middle as the other receiver comes to the inside. Now Tanner will do a lot of scrambling around while Pete is scrambling around to the top of your screen. Breaks to the middle. Now he slows down. The safety on this side, Crum, comes forward. And Tanner does a good thing in running towards the quarterback. So the Trojans have it first down, just short of the Michigan State 20. And Pete looks deep, goes to the corner. Henry, no. Ken Henry, defended by Derek Reed, couldn't pull it in. Henry can jump. As high as anybody on the team, he has a 37-inch vertical oh, leap. He certainly didn't need it there. He should have caught it. You know, when your team is struggling, Keith, somebody needs to step forward and make a big play. Right here, Henry, who was a senior on this ball club, could have made a big impact on that offense by pulling that one in. Reed was not a factor. The ball has simply hit him on the shoulder pad and bounced away. It was right there. Deep back. Pressure. Throws it. Intercepted. He threw it under pressure. His arm was hit as he released the ball, and he threw it right to Kurt Larson. Percy Snow was the man in his face. Larson had an opportunity to start tonight because of the injury to, St to Stradley. Take a look at the pressure that you see Snow this time blitzing, and the mistake by Pete to try to make a positive play out of a negative play, and the ball is intercepted. How quickly things turn around. Southern Cal should have had a touchdown. Henry drops the ball. Now the ball is going the other way. Larry Smith's jaws getting set harder and harder and harder. Southern Cal turned it over three times this half. This is Lorenzo White. And he had those size 12 and a half flashing around <laughs> and if that one man Dwayne Garner hadn't locked his leg he might still be running. You know what's so dangerous about a running back like Lorenzo White. We talked about a little earlier. He's such a cutback runner. He's a slasher but his vision he sees so well. He sees everything that's going on in front of him and, 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 and 180 degrees on either side of him. He is an outstanding peripheral vision uh, runner. Ezor is the tailback now and has the ball. Gets a hole on the left side. And coming up is Coulter to knock him down short of the first down. They got to go just past the 34 for their first down. The ball is resting at the 32. <laughs> George Perla said, You liking this, old buddy? He's, uh, you having a good time? He, you know, this got to be a. a Big, uh, big thing for Ezor. He's running in plays. He's shuffling in plays with a, a Heisman Trophy contender. Right. <laughs> McAllister. And number 53 finally gets enough of him. Delmar Chesley, the sophomore out of Washington, D.C., in at inside linebacker, replacing the injured Rex Moore. 
And he shoves him out of bounds. But uh, McAllister was running for the marker. The top left, 58, is Marcus Cotton as he bang bangs into Sargent. Now, he's supposed to contain. He goes to the inside. That's a mistake on Cotton because he went to the inside and let the quarterback, McAllister, get outside of him. Bobby over there doing a little politicking as to where it was he went out of bounds because he was trying for the first down, and he got it. Larry Smith was telling us that he wanted to move Cotton around. He's his best defensive player, his quickest defensive player. Different ways, moving to the wide side, put him into the short side. But he says, we're not going to do it enough that they're going to get a book on us. Obviously, Michigan State has handled him pretty well here this evening. Ezor back in at tailback. Joe Fuse gone virtually at the distance at fullback for Michigan State. Fullback has it here, Fuse. And not much doing for Joe on that one. Moving from the 34 out near the 36 as we run down to the end of the third quarter with Michigan State leading Southern California 24 to 6. And we'll be back with more of ABC College football after this message and the word from our local station. We got back from Village Ford. We were looking at some music. George Perlis there with a the headset on. Lorenzo White standing next to him. Perlis has said, in all my years of coaching, he says, I've never seen a man with the ability who is this humble as Lorenzo White. He says the only thing that exceeds his ability on the field is, well, his personality. He says he should be on the front of a Wheaties box. He might be someday. Second down and seven from the 37. Ezor the tailback. He has it. And gets up about to the 41. So they're looking at third and short now as we begin the fourth and final quarter of the ball game with Michigan State controlling the ball game 24 to 6. And here are your third quarter stats. And the telling stat right here is the turnovers for Southern Cal. All three of those turnovers were in the third quarter when they had an opportunity to uh, to close the gap. And the other thing it doesn't show on there is the drop touchdown pass by Henry. That's right. He's over again to the 45 and a first down for Michigan State. So Michigan State now is taking control of the line of scrimmage. This offensive front end. Gene Fruge was in at nose guard. He's out of there now. A freshman out of San Martin, California, and Don Gibson has come back. You know, we mentioned a little earlier that we heard that sound uh, right about Perlis and his admiration for Duffy Doherty. The other man that he admires a lot and credits for a lot of his success is Chuck Noll with the Steelers. Here goes Ezor. And he'll tack on one more yard on first down to give him 53 yards and 11 carries, and Dan Owens brought him down. Actually, the down three of Owens, Gibson, Ryan have been more effective defensively tonight than the four linebackers for Southern California. They certainly have, and coming in, the strength of Larry Smith's defensive team was those four senior linebackers. Michigan State's on balance again. Folks coming from the blind side knocks the football loose from McAllister. The Trojans have recovered it. So Stokes gets his third hit of the night, and he really laid one on Bobby McAllister and forced the ball loose. And the Trojans have it at the Michigan State 43. Well, the two outside linebackers get there at the same time. Here's Cotton. Stokes is over here. They're both going to come in. Let's see him cause the fumble. As Cotton on the left gets around, Stokes from the rear end chases it down. One of those deals where one linebacker looks over the defense to the other says, I'll meet you at the quarterback. So the Trojans have an opportunity at the Michigan State 43, and Scott Lockwood is in at tailback as Pete rolls it and throws it to the sidelines, and that's pulled in by Randy Tanner. Lockwood, a freshman. 190 pounder from Longmont, Colorado, which is out near Boulder and was the Colorado State High School Player of the Year last year. 
a true freshman, as was uh, Marcus Hopkins, who fumbled a little bit earlier. So they're getting their true freshman into the ball game, Keith, in search of some speed at that position. Alvin Holmes is another one here who has not yet played. Now this is Lockwood with the ball, bounces off the stack, tried to turn it back outside, and ran right into John Miller to strong safety. And Miller decked him. This Trojan offensive line, Keith, outweighs the Spartan defensive line. For instance, Sager, the left tackle, outweighs Buddy by 40 pounds. But, but it's the angles and the stunning that they're taking. They're getting into the gaps, and they're not being moved. And, you know, I think it's just a waste of time at this point for Southern Cal to continue to try to run up the middle. They ought to run on the corners or what they're doing, getting Pete outside and throwing the ball. He, too, hold back. Tries for it, Leroy Holt. Looks like he's got it. Tim Moore on the stop for Michigan State. And Bergen. It's close enough for the change at 12 minutes and 16 seconds to play in the ball game. Trojans have the first down. We'll pick the outstanding player from each team at the conclusion of the ball game. And each university will receive for its respective general scholarship fund $1,000 in the name of each player from Chevrolet. So put it on the 33, call it first down, Southern California. They need one badly, and a penalty is going to stop them. Dead ball, full start, offense, still first down. Keep hurting themselves. Southern Cal's philosophy with those big offensive linemen has always been to, to wear down the defensive line, and in the fourth quarter, they're going to own it. That hasn't been the case here today. But what a great tradition that Southern Cal has had over the years in the offensive line. People will think about their running backs and their Heisman trophies, but an outstanding uh, group of offensive linemen. Speed on first down 15, pops one in there to Paul Green. And Green is going to be called down. At about the 32 in the arms of Todd Crum. Crum is a uh, the leader of that defensive secondary. He's one of 29 uh, defensive backs that were nominated for the Jim Thorpe Award, which is the top defensive back in the country. Played, say, played corner last year. This year he's moved to safety and uh, is the leader in that secondary. Half holder is wide at the top of the screen. Tanner to the bottom. Pete back to throw. Goes for half holder. Just off his hand. It was three inches too high. He had position in front of Derek Reed, but he just wasn't quite long enough at 6-1 to haul it in. The ball was thrown more to the inside. You see, Affholter has position. He, do, he doesn't need the ball being thrown high. He just needed to be thrown away from Reed, more to the inside of the left, and it would have been a completion. Now it's third down and nine. Trojans, like Michigan State, seven for 14 on third down conversion to the ball game. Penalty flags are five. Brett Parkinson moved along the offensive front. I'll tell you, they don't play again until September 19 against Boston College. I'll bet you one thing that they'll wear out some socks between now and then. Well, five of their first seven games, Keith, are on the road, so it doesn't get any easier for Larry Smith. It'll be interesting to see them here on ABC against Boston College. Uh, Jack McNell's Golden Eagles opening big with the win over the weekend. Now it is third down. And long, 15. 
Deep to the sideline. Tanner there. Randy's got it. Falls it in. First down for Southern California at the Michigan State 16 in front of John Miller. This is a tough way to do it on third and long as Tanner releases inside of Peyton. And so often when you release to the inside, you're probably going to go back to the outside. Not a real disciplined route as he just kind of rounds it off. But the throw is so good that the safety doesn't get there in time. Tanner has caught seven balls now for 83 yards in the ball game. Well, the Trojans stay alive in this possession, but time becoming the ally of Michigan State's penalty flag as the fullback Holt is decked right about the line of scrimmage. Tim Moore, the hitter, and Holt the hitty. <laughs> Michigan offside. State offside in the neutral zone. Bach is stopped now offside. at 10 52. Defense still first down. So it's first and five now for the Trojans. They've had three. This will be their third opportunity at a touchdown. Actually, four counting the uh, drop pass by Henry. So it just magnifies the fact that they have hurt themselves as much as anything. It's the first game of the year. They're on the road, and it's. Uh, I'm sure that the. They're going to be a little bit nervous coming out of the box, but uh, they don't need to stop themselves. Number 41, Lockwood, throws the ball in the end zone, and it's picked off. Intercepted by Crum, and hauled out of the end zone to about the seven-yard line. That's five penalties, four turnovers, and one sack in the second half for USC. Poor execution, Keith. Crum made a nice play. The receiver is right here on this side. He's going to come to the inside and break to the outside. The defensive man will come up. Here is Crum. He's going to come over and break in front of the, of the receiver and make the interception. All right, you got him so Now break to the outside, get him the ball. He throws it behind him and late. Good uh, design, poor execution. And Michigan State owns the ball at their seventh. First down with 10.38 to play in the game. That's probably with the most photographed personality on campus. Sparty does have his personality. This uh, the Pioneer Land Grant University, you know, back in 1855. All right, from the seventh. Michigan State will move it with Lorenzo White carrying it. Look at that. Matt got shirt tail by number 13, Jeff Marie. He was just a breath away from being gone again. Ball is at the six yard line. A loss of a yard on the play as the Goodyear Flip America. Sails over Spartan Stadium. Limps out of Houston. Pilot Larry Chambers. Captain is from Spring, Texas. Here comes 185-pound sophomore from Las Vegas again, Ezor. They really haven't given Ezor a chance to pop outside and do much dancing around. Much of his work tonight has just been right up the middle, and he's taken some licks, but uh, looks like he's relishing it. So he and Lorenzo White now are alternating pretty much at tailback with the game in hand. Ball is on the 10, third down, and seven. You never have enough uh, running backs, Keith. No, you don't. They're one play away from, uh, from a serious injury. This is White. And Lorenzo is stopped at the 12, and Michigan State now will have to punt it. And you're going to get to see the man who... Uh, had the longest average in college football last year, though he was one punt short of winning that title. Second half possessions by Penn State has two touchdowns and two fumbles. Michigan State, I'm thinking of Penn State. Michigan State. Montgomery with a good snap out of the end zone. Nails it. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, Michael Tanner. Back all the way up to the 24-yard line. He has no place to run. The Spartans are swarmed all over him. And Greg Montgomery hangs one. High and 65 yards. 
Timeout. Senior from Shrewsbury, New Jersey. And he can flap whoop it. He kicked. In his career, he kicked, he has kicked nine punts over 60 yards. And in last year against Michigan, had an 86 yarder. I'll tell you what. As a, as a quarterback, ex-quarterback, and as an offensive team, it's nice to have somebody that can get you out of trouble. Southern California now going to work from the 25-yard line. Rodney Pete throws it. It is intercepted by Tim Moore, the linebacker. And so what happens? Montgomery punts it 65 yards. Pete throws an interception. And Michigan State now has the football first down at the Southern California 26. Here's more right here. He's not going to do anything but drop back into this zone and wait for Pete to roll out. The ball will be right at him. As you see the corner at the top of the screen comes forward. Moore just comes right back, stands at his man. I think the ball was overthrown with a short man, and Moore was right there to intercept. So with eight minutes and 36 seconds, this one appears to belong to Michigan State. Ezor is the tailback. He's got it. Down to the 24, where Marcus Cutton gets the tackle on Ezor. And now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. The Michigan State Spartans leading the football game 24 to 6 and in control now of Southern California's game on both sides of the ball. Lorenzo White, who's had a big night, is back at tailback for the Spartans as they go unbalanced right. McAllister keeps it and promptly gets hammered by Tim Ryan, the defensive tackle. And I'll re-emphasize the point that the down three of Ryan Gibson Owens have been much more effective defensively tonight than Southern California's heralded linebacking for. Of course, Rex Moore has gone to the hospital for x-rays because of an ankle injury and is out of there. Southern Cal's defense is young on the defensive line and young in the secondary. They have some outstanding players. They're just a little young, and the leaders were supposed to be in that linebacking core. State goes balanced this time. McAllister throws left with it and finds some room. Stokes can't get him, but coming up out of the secondary, Chris Hale can. Oh, there's not much there for Bobby in that particular effort. And as he's knocked out of bounds, he stops the clock at 7.13. Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator for the Michigan State Spartans, has certainly prepared this offense very well. That was a, a run all the way, and both running backs found Marcus Cotton to the wide side of the field, and both of them blocked him. Of course, that when you have two guys block one man, there's somebody else that's going to make the tackle. But to... John Langlow here with a 43-yard field goal drive. Good. That might be the ultimate nail. 708 to play in the game. Michigan State now 27 and Southern California 6. We'll return with more of ABC's college football after this message and a word from our local station. This tells the story right here for the Trojans. Second half possessions. Six possessions, five turnovers, and as we said, the one touchdown pass that was dropped is not in there, so that is not the way you want to run your offense. Langlow kicking off. Low line drive that is slapped down by Randy, by Gary Wellman. And Wellman, who's got great speed, but couldn't find the crack that time, and he's knocked down just past the 20 yard line. Tonight on Nightline with Sam Donaldson, overweight and out of shape. It's a terrible thing to say to me. <laughs> it's the tragic story, though, about the physical condition of America's youth. Very few of them seem to care. Sam Donaldson later tonight on Nightline following your late local news.
Kevin McLean is now in at quarterback for Southern California. See if he can crank something up. Fifth year senior out of Lakewood, California. And Kevin's first pass is over the middle into the numbers of the receiver. Scott Galbraith drops loose. They call it a fumble. Or did they? I thought the ball was never caught. Michigan State jumping up and down, but it did look, not look to me like the ball was caught. Fleet, second down. Yep, was not caught. Get a look from the end zone here. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I'm sorry, that's a completion and a fumble, but we had a, I think we had a much better view than the officials did. Mm. Barton had a reason to be jumping around. Second down and ten. Out of the shotgun. Pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage and will fall incomplete. Chris Sunland got his hands on it. Red shirt freshman, 260 pound tackle from Canton, Ohio. Well, it has not been a good opener for Larry Smith. First game at Southern Cal. Well, to put it bluntly and, and succinctly, uh, the Trojans have been whipped. But at the same time, they have hurt themselves as much as anything. So offensive lineman from Southern Cal. The last 23 years, they've been 22 All-Americans in that offensive line, but not so good tonight. McLean with a ton of time, finally unloads it. Henry catches and gets a first down at the 37. Well, the test of the football team's character will show up over the next two weeks and the subsequent game, September 19, against Boston College. You'll find out about him then. I think Larry made a comment when he first got to SC and had his meeting with his team. He says, those of you who stay will be champions. And right then, they knew it was going to be a tough, hard uh, camp, and it has been, and uh, he will turn this program around. There's no question about it. First down. McLean out of the shotgun gets his pass away to the fullback Leroy Holt and he's up to the 43 I'll tell you one other thing when you and uh, Notre Dame will be the next opponent for Michigan State so anybody who's going to be button heads with these Spartans I don't think this year is going to have uh, have it easy I'm very impressed with the uh, the Spartans how well organized they are they seem to be prepared know what they want to do it's their opening ball game, and uh, they don't look like uh, this is their first game of the year. Plains pass is caught by Lockwood, the freshman from Colorado, and Scott will have a first down for the Trojans at the Michigan State 47, 539 to play, and there is a disappointed young man, Rodney Pete. Well, it's not his fault. He did what he could do. He just needs a little bit of help in the running game. His receivers, I don't think they ever threaten the cornerbacks deep for uh, Michigan State. Throwing out of the shotgun. The pass is complete down to the 41-yard line to the fullback, Holt. And that'll bring up second down and four as they pick up six on the play. Going without the huddle. Penalty flag. That's going to be probably motion against Southern Cal. Could be an offside, but I thought there was motion as Holt makes the catch down at the 35, and it was illegal procedure by USC. So once again, they have hurt themselves. Well, we have seen tonight one of the prime Heisman contenders in Lorenzo White. He's had a big night. We will see another one on Saturday in Tim Brown. Of Notre Dame. White has produced 93 yards running tonight and a couple of touchdowns. Heavy Brown gets his first action of the season against the Wolverines of Michigan on Saturday here on ABC. If that game comes close to what it was last year, we'll have an outstanding one. I don't know if I can stand it. <laughs> they run the ball up the middle with a fullback Holt. And Leroy is going to pick up a Southern Cal first down as he goes for about 10 yards. They were looking at second nine, and he picks up the first down. And there's the story of the ball game with time definite of the ally now of Michigan State. 
I remember one Michigan Notre Dame game where Bob Crable ran up the back of one of his teammates to block a Michigan field goal. And that pass is off the shoulder pads of Percy Snow, the middle linebacker, who had dropped into that intermediate zone and almost had himself an interception. And there's a penalty flag thrown back in that neighborhood of the wide receiver. Could be a flag against the Spartans. The wide receiver was uh, turned upside down. John Jackson. I think we have interference. The, the ball was tipped, though, wasn't it, Keith? Yes, it was. It was thrown right in. And once the ball is tipped, it's, uh, Percy Snow you was can't have right interference. Gordon Reese. No there flag. is no flag on the play. Right. The ball was tipped. The ball was tipped. Okay. Second Actually, down. the only call you could have had back there once the ball ricochets off of uh, Percy Snow is the personal foul. Yeah. See, the, but when the ball is tipped, there can't be an interference. And the uh, it's a good call. It's a good flag pickup. Second down and ten Gordon from Reese from the 36. <laughs> Caught in the cookie jar. <laughs> Number 77 for Michigan State came flying across. Eric Mouton, big freshman, got caught. Dead ball, Dead ball. offside defense, still second down. He's just trying to wind up and anticipate and get his name called, and he started a tad too soon. Second down and five. to hold the pullback out of the shotgun formation and he's going to be a little short of his first first down it looks like it'll be third and about a yard Bach continues to run along McLean loops one for the corner to Randy Tanner. All 11 men were up on the line of scrimmage this time. McLean reads it very well, throws the ball high and to the outside, man-to-man -man coverage. Tanner makes a nice adjustment, catches the ball, and gets the touchdown. That's the kind of play that Southern Cal needed a little bit earlier to keep him in this ball game. Freddy Parker was the defender on the play, and even though Tanner made a fine catch on it, it really still was not a, a real foot race, and it seemed obvious that uh, Tanner had the edge in speed. The kick is good by Quinn Rodriguez, and with 4:13 to play in the ball game, it's now a 27 to 13 game with Michigan State leading by 14. 27 to 13. Eric Affolter will kick it off. John DiBaggio, the president of Michigan State University, just passed by the door. And he's got a grin, a yard wide. <laughs> it certainly does. <laughs> McLean there uh, could be playing for a lot of other schools. Uh, Chuck Stobert, the offensive coordinator, feels like he's got a lot of ability and would, would be playing in like 90% of the, the other schools around the country. But uh, he's a senior backing up Rodney Pete. I don't know how much time he's going to see this year, but certainly. Did that drive very well. Four of eight, 64 yards, and one touchdown. Nobody really deep for Michigan State because I think they smell onside. Receivers and backs are up front. Trojans moving around. Coming over to overload the one side. They bounce it over that way. The ball's loose. Penalty flag flying around. Trojans have it. But let's see about the flag. That may mess up everything. I think Greg Cowett was the man that got down there and got the ball. Cowett got it, but they were off sides. It comes back, as you can see, the frustration on Larry Smith's face. Let's take a look and see if we can see anybody going across the 35-yard line before the ball is kicked. They lit up the left side, kick it over here. 
Uh, run that back again. Can we run that back again? Maybe the, maybe at very, the very bottom. Encroachment on a kicking <laughs> team. Five-yard penalty, re-kick. I didn't see anything. Maybe maybe with the, the that far ball bounced, bottom. That ball bounces off Todd Crum. Look at the far bottom of the screen. Bottom right. What? I don't know. Maybe he lined up offsides. I think he lined up offside. How can you line up offsides? Careless. <laughs> It was, there, there was a, an official right there in front of him. The, the line judge was right there. Maybe he thought he was uh, was uh, not going to see him. So. Seven penalties, five turnovers by Southern California in this half. 409 to play. They had the ball. Gus uh, Coet got the ball down around the 41 yard line of Michigan State. They pop one in there real quick, and we got a ball game, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it didn't work that way. So the ball goes on the tee at the 30. And the backs and receivers stay in there as the receivers for Michigan State. They're anticipating another try at an onside kick. This time they kick it away. Ezor will field it on a bounce, bobble it, fall down with it at the 25 yard line. Well, I, I, it would seem to me if you're going to kick it away, you kick it as far as you can and then try to outrun somebody. You know, the only thing he may have been trying to do is pop that ball straight up. He had a high tee. Sometimes they can pop it up and then yep, their sometimes. coverage can get down there and get it. But uh, if they were kicking it deep, I don't see why they didn't kick it into the end zone. So Michigan State has the ball. They'll put it at the 26th first down. Now let's see if the Spartans can grind it out with Lorenzo White back in at tailback and James Moore now back in at fullback. He had the opening series and then left the game. White bounces outside and penalty flags. That's going to be a hit out of bounds. So it looks like the Trojans have hurt themselves again. Nope, it's going to go the other way going to go the other way. I, yep, that's what I th I thought the call would be right there because there was a helmet in the back of White out of bounds, but it's a holding call against um, Michigan State. Mark Carrier, incidentally, was the other fellow who lost his jersey stolen in the equipment room, so he's wearing 19 tonight. When you see him next time, he'll be in number holding seven. Holding, offense, still first down. Look to the right side of the screen. Ryan 99 in white. I think he might be the one being held. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, I'm a little surprised that White is still in the ball game at this point, Keith. Yep. And he's got the ball. Yeah, maybe George wants him to have 100 yards. So he pops it up over the 20 to about the 21. American League Baseball scores Detroit a winner tonight. Yank is winning their game. Minnesota won their game. California lost. Oakland is winning. And Toronto a winner. So Toronto will stay a half game up in the American League East. The National League, Phillies beat the Mets. And Houston beat the Giants. While Cincinnati won. And Montreal beat St. Louis. Blake Ezor the tailback now. And no chance. He was just running a slant outside, and somebody forgot to put a shoulder pad on Big Dan Owens, and he shot through and got him at the 17-yard line. So it'll be third down for Michigan State. Ball is on the 17. They need 19 yards. Southern Cal needs a turnover, Keith. If they could knock the ball loose and get the ball in the end zone, we'd have a seven-point game, and then anything could happen. Spartans coming straight at you. Ezor carries the ball. Very conservative, and now they'll punt it away. But I guess you can do that when you've got a guy like Montgomery. The last one was 65 yards. He's, he's punted four times tonight. 54, 42, 51, 65. It's a tremendous asset for a team, especially your defense. Your defense can always start probably uh, with the other team's offense backed up 
within their 30 yard line at least. Uh, big asset to have a good punter. We've got a timeout with two minutes and 36 seconds to play in the game. Well, here's the man, Greg Montgomery, for his uh, fifth punt of the night. Randy Tanner is the deep man for Southern California. Ten Trojans up there going after it. Got it out. Another good one. Tanner back to the 26. And out of bounds at the 35. 54 yard punt. And a nine yard return. And the MVPs for this ball game tonight. Each university receiving $1,000 in the name of these players for their general scholarship fund from Chevrolet. And they are Lorenzo White for Michigan State, Rodney Pete for Southern California. Kevin McLean throwing out of the shotgun. Gets one off, complete to Scott Lockwood. And Lockwood doesn't get a lot out of that one. But it is complete. He got out of bounds to stop the clock. Picked up four yards. Second down, six, 222 to play in the game. McLean again to Lockwood. Steps out of bounds, about a yard short of the first down. He had the chance there to go ahead and stretch himself out and pick up the first down, but he just stepped out of bounds. Tanner tonight's had a pretty good ball game. Randy has caught eight passes for 109 yards, and the Trojans' only touchdown. Lockwood shakes tackler. Gets the first down, butts heads, and picks up a first down for Southern California at the Michigan State 39. He looks like a tough kid. That Lockwood looks uh, the best of all of the tailbacks, uh, the freshman tailbacks that Smith has tried here this evening. You know, that's something that can come out of a defeat like this late in the ball game. You can find some players. Lockwood gets in when there's no pressure on him and just has been doing very well. Ball is low snap. McLean picks it up. Dumps it incomplete. He threw it out there in front of Lockwood, so that'll go as an incomplete forward pass, and McLean took a lick. Certainly did. That uh, the defense from Michigan State is still coming. You know, when George Perlis first came to Michigan State, he wanted to bring this, this Pittsburgh Steeler type of defense with him. The stunt 4-3 uh, as we take another look at the hit. Eric Moten got caught offside a while ago. This time he got his lick. Scott Lockwood makes the catch. That is tumbled out of bounds. No, he didn't go out of bounds. Uh-uh. Fox going to run and when at he, the 35. And when he brought this defense with him, he needed one of the ex-Steelers to come and show the defensive lineman how to run it and coach the other coaches. And he brought Steve Furness, one of the longtime Steeler defensive linemen, over here with him. McLean throws and misses Ricky Irvin, another freshman who is in the ball game. They list Ricky at 5'10". I don't think he's that tall. He's more like 5'8", but he's a stocky, blocky, 190-pound freshman from Altadena, California. It is now fourth down and six for Southern California. Fourth and six. McLean going for it. Now throws it. Got a man. Jackson. Incomplete in the end zone. Should have gone for his first down. Well, he had him open, Keith. That was a good play. I mean, he wasn't thinking. He was thinking first down, but then when he saw Jackson so wide, if he threw it more to the left, there's plenty of room to the left. Jackson has to wait for it. The defensive man gets there. If he John Miller. It further to the left, he had a touchdown. John Miller stretching as far as he could reach. Got just enough of it to mess it up. And so the ball goes over to Michigan State with a minute and 29 seconds. And Lorenzo White is in the ball game. Lorenzo has 98 yards on 20 carries, and I think the primary motivation here is simply to get Lorenzo a chance to get 100 yards in his opening game of 1987, his senior season. Check him, check him, check him. He's got it. He's got his 100 yards and then some. 
as he got a great block on the right side, a great seal block from the right tackle, uh, Robbins. And the end knocked uh, the corner out of there, and Lorenzo runs for first down at the 47 yard line. So that gives him 111 yards. You know, as dominant as Michigan State has looked this second half, Southern Cal had an opportunity to make some plays. That last pass, if that was yep. a touchdown, the pass that was thrown to Henry at the other end, uh, that he dropped for a touchdown. Well, I think Michigan State has played well, as you said. It does not look like an opener for them. They've been very well organized all night and played and made actually very few mistakes. They've had a couple of turnovers. Southern California has, uh, to a large degree, self-destructed. They've made some mental mistakes and a lot of physical mistakes. Now. Uh, I'm sure that Larry Smith can deal with the physical mistakes, but the mental mistakes he'd like to get out of. I mean, there's, these are young kids are going to underthrow receivers at times. You just want to go back and be able to execute when you have the opportunity. 50 seconds, and Lorenzo White still at tailback. But McAllister will handle it. And there's a penalty play. I think Southern California's plan is to leave the ballpark, go get on the airplane, and go home. Well, I don't, I, don't, trip. I don't think they're going to hang around play again tomorrow. <laughs> not, not the that way puts they them play. home about one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, no, it's going to be a long trip. They've had a tough trip this second half too. Five turnovers, seven penalties. Flipping offense, still second down. 39 seconds to play in the ball game. You never stop coaching. You just, especially early on in the season, you never stop. You go to the very last second. You just keep on teaching, keep on teaching. Well, you know, we're fans. We're we're up here. We're saying, well, the ball game's probably over. For him, it's not. He's putting. Uh, he may have found himself a tailback for the yep. next ball game in this Lockwood because of the opportunity that he got in and played very well when he get given the chance. Timeout with 34 seconds remaining. Southern California calling it. They have one left. When the sun goes down. Well, we dodged the thunderstorms. Had a little crackler come across here about two hours before the ball game, but nothing serious from that. The game played in very comfortable conditions. Temperature in the 60s. And it's a win for the home team. Michigan State leading 27-13 on the ball. Second down, 34 seconds. Southern California can stop the clock only one more time. Give the ball to Blake Ezor, is now in a tailback. Lorenzo White is out of there. White finishes the night with 111 yards and uh, gets off to a pretty good start for his uh, senior season. And the Trojans have just spent their last time out. Tonight's ABC Sports Exclusive has been brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. And by UPS for overnight delivery from coast to coast. UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. Remember coming up Saturday, ABC's college football, Notre Dame at Michigan. It was a one-pointer a year ago at South Bend. Well, the Trojans have four tailbacks with uh, big trophies. Lorenzo White trying to get one at Michigan State. Bob McAllister drops back, knowing full well that USC has no more timeouts remaining. And now it's simply a matter of time running out. And remember, too, on Monday, September 14th, the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New York Giants and the Chicago Bears. Free game show begins live at 8.30 Eastern, September 14, here on ABC Sports. Stay tuned for Nightline following your late local news. Aerial facilities provided by the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television, your final score. The Michigan State Spartans. 27, the Southern California Trojans, 13. On the always popular band-aid, that's two from